be expecting that. Going up against Yukal, this is definitely one of those real benchmark moments to say, okay, you want to be an elite mid laner in the LPL, one of those vaunted few. This is a chance against one of the other mid laners, which is starting to come back into form to really strut your stuff. I sure about shit. Uh, Cheng Z, or Chengs, I'm not entirely sure, uh, used to be called Juicy back in the day. Uh, he's the coach for TT. He just looks so happy to be there when he steps out onto the stage. I feel like every single time we see TT step, TT step Huge out, match. he's always got a big old grin on his face. It's, uh, it's happy to see. Milkman happy needs my needs our energy. Really. True. Top I have to enable right Dom wide. Should be a heavy favorite coming in today. Um, and they have been, generally speaking, doing very well. Obviously, that series against JDG, I think a series a lot of people expected them to be a heavy favorite in, looking perhaps a little like luster. Uh, but both of these teams, very recently, beating Dom White is enabled. So I guess that's a bit of a beta stick for us. <laughs> They've both absolutely smashed WE recently. I mean, the fact that Top <laughs> dropped a series to JDG, I don't think that's going to shatter the it's whole It's the worst team. mode on Twitch. And the way of the LPL is that... It's honestly one of the worst modes ever. Flip ways and that you don't expect because teams just have a, a series meta start to evolve which favors one or the other i think the series meta which comes to <laughs> milkman got rolled yeah i was watching um, the end of it he actually revolves a lot around how 369 is going to demolish uh, yeah Lawyer it is counter pick the milkman Lawyer outside of having santa games has looked quite um suspect i wonder whether we're going to go back to something like the renekton first pick for tt just to make sure that you've got something valuable in top side that tt road to playoffs continues bro if they win this they're in really good shape i mean if they just beat fpx they're in pretty good shape as well such a good run of form he's been back to assuming that wave will get two owed but who knows because the thing is that anyone's legend game score is just as bad as tt's but if al loses their last match and third shot gaming win Could be a problem. they will this guaranteed time. have like better Turns game out. score right unless they get two out here i guess who could have seen this coming and oh yeah i don't know had the greatest split ever. even if they lose this I feel like with TT, the even if they get two out they'll like still have game score so well, we'll see bro will they make the miracle happen pretty decent performances pretty consistently not you know it's not always been perfect but Beichuan, Hoya have had some really rough games. They've had some really, really tough times this split. And I feel like... Bro, NIP the end, ends their year like with BLG Top Esports. Holy fuck. Well, it does feel like it could be quite a hard... Oh, they play the tomorrow. That could lead to a potential draft strategy for Top Esports. Well. Bro, all the games tomorrow actually matter so much. Like League of Legends right now. There's a lot of either top side focus or bot side focus. I mean, at this ah, my whole chat is just dumb ones now. Renekton plus Lee Sin or Vi plus a roaming mid laner where you could just dive the enemy top laner. Definitely could be an option for top esports and carry through 369. And while that happens, um, of course, if that's going to come towards top side, it then leaves kind of bot lane 2v2 isolated. I think one place which I'm actually quite happy with the matchup, weirdly, despite the fact that Jackalove is up there with the very best AD carries in the LPL right now. I think one extent has, has really put a name out for himself. You know, I remember back to when TT were playing against JDG against Ruler and Missing when they were playing a load of the Lucian Nami. Actually, one extent did very well on an individual level versus them. There's an LDL call up in summer of last year and continuing on to this one. I think he's been part of this new school of LDL talent, which has really made a name for themselves and started to stand their ground quite well. I think against Jackalov, of course, it's going to be a hard series. Jackalov and Mako are very very good at league of legends yeah. i am very excited to see how one extent can go toe to toe with them because i think he does have what it takes he's a very good ad carry it certainly is the question is now we need jacob wide too there's, there's there's good and then there's taking on dracula for you know <laughs> yeah. I, I do feel like nah, that's that the worst mode ever the category oh, mine is right, so... that is always going to be a tough one um, yeah you know, but you enabled it in your chat he's uh He's from good stock, you know, when you think about one extent's career so far. He's come onto the LPL this year uh, under TT. I mean, when Super makes that statement, I wouldn't take it well if Alvaro, I was Alvaro or one of his teammates. I mean, he's the best and he thinks his team sucks. Yeah, I mean, that's that would be the implication, right? If he actually believes that his team's in eighth place and he's the best, he must mean that uh, he must think that his teammates suck. Yep. Uh, dude, you know what's so funny is, is Thorin just tweeted the same thing. This is logical. Like, I thought the same thing. You said the same thing. This is actually how logic works, but like, people are like, dude, no, there's no way that that's like what that could mean. Very first series. He was only a second series in. Was versus Jackula in one of his first debut series. And he outplayed him in one of those late game team fights. Zeri versus Aphelios. He's gone up against him and. 
heard of stuff before. Need to continue that though, and TT need to not just continue as they were doing, they need to step up. If they win today, they put themselves really well and truly into that race for playoffs. A lot of bot side bans, an Ari ban away from Cream as well, Talia away from UCAL, one of the great players of that champion. Split bans, and as we're kind of expecting, Hoyer, he's in a bit of a dangerous player matchup versus 369, the best top laner on the whole throughout spring 2024. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. in first play could be really big. We're going to see the Quinn that we saw banned earlier on today, aren't we? Oh, that'd be so <laughs> fun. That would be so <laughs> funny if 369 locked that in. I don't actually expect that to come through. I will say, feels like we've kind of gone back in time a little bit with these bans, right? Lucian Varus, Callista, Senna. Okay. Early on in the split, there was every game we were seeing for it. Renekton first That's pick for Hoya. Asante, I mean, I would be scared to the first pick Renekton into 369 because he's just like the best Orn player on the planet, so. Is the elephant in the room in it always end up happening. We'll see if either team does want to go for that. 480 carries banned. He's also an Aphelios player, might go back to... Karma for Cream, okay. Two picks which he's kind of said, right. I'm carrying now kind of champion. I mean, generally, people will just yes, pick Ari here. Harder to play that. We'll see if they do angle towards something a bit more bot lane um, You could just pick your bot lane if you're afraid of getting pinched because there are 480 bands. So if we drop down and we get like six plus top esports pick an 80 carry, you could be on your eighth 80 carry. But if you're willing to play like Smolder plus Jinx plus whatever, yeah, Smolder, Jinx, Zeri, like this whole tier of like B tier 80 carries, then you can definitely drop AD here. Way picked. One of UCAL's best champs. Does Beijuan just go Xin Zhao then? Viega. Oh, I don't like that. I am not a fan of uh, Beijuan Viega. He did okay with it last time he played it, though. Okay. Something I've been saying recently. Xin Zhao. Rakan ban. Okay, so that's the target, the Zai Rakan. Also, kind of makes Kaisa weaker in this game. 1XN wanting to play that. Wonder if Top Esports either picks Smolder or plays it. Okay, they, they get it banned from TT. They get a respect ban. I think when you have like uh, Xin Zhao, certain champions just become like way higher prio. Like, they have Nautilus this game, but generally, like, I think Zeri Lulu, when you have a Zin Zhao, makes more sense because then you have, like, two targets stole. Alistar, okay. Twist of Fate, also something we've seen a little bit of down in the bottom lane, and a lot of that off the back of many, many, many Could just be a Kaiser, to be honest. If the Zeri will be banned here. It's not something that Jackie Love has lent to massively. It will see. Just 369, last pick, or is it just a... Uh, 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 Cassante on four. For example, the the karma you expect that to go mid lane. Or in ban, okay. But you got we the have seen karma so as real a little bit. Oh, true. Yeah. Normalist being looked at is like, wow. Well, <laughs> Three six <laughs> nine <laughs> orange. How, how long? How long am I gonna let him do this? <laughs> Rumble. It's Kaisa. Okay. <laughs> So then you're probably not going to go Kai'Sa then, if you're going Rumble. So you're pretty magic damage heavy already. Philios? Is it just going to be a Philios Rel then? I feel like you want some engage here from your support. And then you have like Alistar ban, Rakan ban, Nautilus taken. I think Renata is like kind of weird. I don't really like the idea of going Renata here. Seems like very hard for your team to fight, like choose one to fight. She would be hype. I don't think he wants to play it though, right? Jackie, this is the absolute coincidence. Oh, yes, let's go. Damn, that's crazy. That's a crazy pick here. I mean, not many people would want to play Draven here. This looks like a hard fucking Draven game. Right. Jackie loves Draven. They can go wherever they like if they want to try and dive. They've, they've got options on both sides of the map. What happened to your boy Milky Way? Clown, clown. Better season than Faker. My ass. That's my ass. Your head hurts. 
Oh, oh both? Seconds. Okay, nice. 20 minutes with this pick. It is a legendary pick for the marksman in the bot lane. One XN might have taken a game off of him last year, but uh, there is no messing around from Jackie Love and Mako in this series today. This is Draven Nautilus kill lane supreme. Yeah, he's uh, Jackie Love's Draven. 31 games, 21 wins, a <laughs> 67% win rate on the pick. He's an absolute monster. Let's see how he's going to go in this one. Mako having a Nautilus as well. I feel like so often you see Draven's not really set up in the draft. I feel like this draft is so good to play Draven in, honestly. Yeah, and I feel like when you've got so much upfront burst damage, uh, Draven, if you can kind of bob and weave and get away from the Renata ultimate, it really feels like he can do a lot of damage to um, melee. Champions on the top side of the map and that Renekton of Diego need to be so, so careful. If you get chewed up by those axes, you are not lasting long in this game. What that means is it's going to come down to skirmish and team fight execution. No, no. And I love that when we have two teams on the line, a TT with so much stakes available to them. Let's see if they can find it. A little bit worried there. We weren't going to get a TT job. Bit of a delay. A yeah, like Berlin beer. It was okay. A lot of it tasted similar. Getting the last hit on the ward there. Mako sweeping it. That does mean the cream yeah. can hit level two off of that first wave. So potential advantage there in the mid lane. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, we should try to see if there's a place that does Belgian beer. Belgian beer is like my favorite. Uh, oh, sorry. Probably have a Berlin place that does Belgian beer. So nothing too crazy. To get OG the League side. bets last reply. Okay, bro. Yep. See if any, uh, not the ward, the rune. See if there's anything um, out of order there, but it seems like we've largely got ourselves on the um, <laughs> pretty regular stuff. There is the airy for you guys. Sometimes you'll see the comment out. RNG there. Ming, I feel like my performance is not as good as before. Let's see how long I can play. If I'm not good enough, then I should stop wasting everyone's time. <laughs> and then he just fucking tweets at Odo Omne. Nah, that's so fucked up. Later on into the Jesus, say, man. Felios very good at fighting for level one prio. I don't know if he's good enough to take on the Draven <laughs> threat. Oh, hook hits onto a minion, so that should push away. He's the biggest auto omni hater, bro. I've always felt like a Felix just a <laughs> champion until level two, and that's why he's Holy shit. champions that can allow him to play towards that level two. It means that if they don't get it right now, they're going to be really, really um, in a lot of trouble. They give up that level two, but I think the Renata standing on the wave just about gets it to them. And congratulations to Mako, 900 LPL games. What a milestone to reach. 900 LPL games. Crazy, you can even play 900 LPL games. Has there, you, you couldn't have even played 900 LCS games if you played every single season of LCS, I'm pretty sure. Like most splits you could get 36 games max per year and then in playoffs like, even if you played max like what's the most games i ever played in playoffs i guess it'd be like 15 like a fine cream or something yeah i'm turning it to cheese at this point um it's crazy. Alright. Good hook. Oh, great handshake, but the cleanse comes through. Damn, he's just doing it. It's just like that, bro. He's just murdering him like that? Okay, Hums. Wait, he just murdered them just like that, bro? Okay, it's just Jackie Love Draven, I guess, bro. He just absolutely fucking no murdered them. Three rides in this bot lane. You must be this tall to ride the bot lane roller coaster. Well, this whole game is completely fucked now. GG. The level one sets things up so well. Jojo had already run through all of his pots. Wait, what did uh? Ignite in the top side. I'm gonna lead through to a kill for three. Wait, it's actually pretty bad for three six nine. His lane's in really bad position. He can get one shot right now. He has to TP back, or I mean, he has to base and and lose a wave. He doesn't have TP. Ignite. Being in the game, we get ourselves a uh, up close and personal view of how Jackal Good goes. hook from um, Mako. Forward, throws axes, keeps catching the axes, he uses the cleanse to keep going forwards again. He's just got so wait, Draven is so balanced actually. Time and time again, gets the lethal tempo up. So much attack. Draven is actually so balanced. You start the game with like a BF sword level one, every single kill is a fucking shutdown, and then every time you press W, you move at 500 movement speed and have a bunch of attack speed. Time, so surviving on barely 
Eddie HP and a Sheen picked up as well as two long swords. Oh my lord, this lane is not getting any easier. Yeah, then if you like die once, you're obligated to get your account banned by typing a slur and running it down. Hexflash is available for Mako, so now sheer yeah. respect has to come through from the TT bot lane. And I mean, Bage one, he's got two options here. Try and go down there and bail them out, or just abandon ship. Hoya is in really good spot. So hard because um, once you start losing the count, three six nine fucked up a trade for sure. It's very hard to reach the CS beyond that point. Three six nine uh, sees that there was jungle attention top side, so just sticking around. But this is gonna get worse for him, by the way. At six is when you actually start losing, so You're absolutely essentially right just lost right. the part of the lane that he's supposed to win. Because there is a very big chance that Mako just picks another hook and another kill goes through. And that's going to make things even worse because Yukal's not a roaming champion. He can't roam down there on the Talir or the Ari or something like that. Okay, Grubs are going down. Maybe he can get a flash here. Completely ruined the bot side of the map. Nope. And there's a Doesn't even get flash. Cream is here. TN's here. Oh shit. Who starts it? Oh, Mako is just starting it. Okay. What a homie. He's dying for the cause. I mean that's just that's just good you know the thing that i love about this is it looks like so like it looks like there's so much intention here you know like when you look at mako it's like he's just saying to his team like yes i'm fucking dying for the play this is still a good play even if i die one for two like easily you know I just feel like so many times I watch players and they're like, you can't tell if they know how the dive is going to play out. They don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah, Jackie Love just has an SS Reaver at six minutes. FF. This is such an important game for TT. Reminder, if they win this series, they get themselves truly into the playoffs race. <laughs> he just autos one, roots one, autos the other, roots the other. They can leave themselves completely exposed on the bot side. Yukal then just goes under turret, and he's trapped under turret beyond that point. 190 for a Jackie Love there. What he can do here. And then this is like so basic, right? Like just stack your fucking Q off the wave that's incoming before you dive. It's so easy, man. Why is Rogue still messing this up, bro? Why is Rogue still fucking that up in LEC? Oh, this guy's dead as hell. Oh, maybe not. Wait, Beitron is level six. What the fuck? Wait, Jackie Love just murdering him. Oh, no. Oh no, he has an essence reaver. Oh no, he has an essence reaver. How, how long till six he's looking? Nah, he's not going to, right? Nah, there's no point of him throwing it. Renata E would probably make it so he lives. Probably just tank it with Renata E. He is so strong two levels up as you already said that first item at six minutes into the game the thing is with him being so strong he can take extra turret plates like this he gets the back and you know tt i mean they get one back especially against that lead that's that's something i suppose but the fact that jack love is just now effectively a fountain laser already there's a death gonna be on screen here as well as just a base one's called out oh tia is just fighting to the death he has no ult h1 had no ult oh he is here Okay. Oh, he's just dead. 369 ignited him. Oh. Oh, that would have been huge. Chocho's actually running back bot, but he thought that he was just going to base it here too. Would have been. Yeah, it was a good, it was a good um, guess. From Jackie Love. I don't hate it. People have called this team an early aggressive team, and that's not always the way to characterize them. It's just that once you give up the first play, the game... Well, now top lane is, like, really, really good for 369. Early in this game, and or not really, really good, but it's, like, completely saved. Go. Where it was kind of giga-doomed before. Certainly not. This is the fastest team in the lead. Uh, in the league, sorry. And they still have a 100% win rate when they're ahead at the 15-minute mark. And I think at this... Well, they're 3,500 gold ahead at eight and a half minutes felt like the odds of them falling behind by 15 minutes are pretty oh miss the cannon this stage. Uh, they got a good trade he's gonna probably ulti this wave i would think three six nine should probably ulti that wave team that love to play around baron famously a team that love to throw around baron yes. uh, and flip quite a lot of barons but it does feel like they have been very very yeah. Uh, consistent with the Baron play across the course of this year. It does feel like a much more regimented version of top esports. 
But when you give them picks like Draven, when you give them this ability to just bully in lane, they will absolutely take that chance. And the fact that 369 rejoining the roster and being such a force in the top lane as well, you know, roaming down to that plane to the top, like, top jungle as well, so willing to follow his team into the fire and light a couple of those fires himself has once again changed this team. 369 has been on magnificent form so far. But yes, they did drop a couple of series to the rivals, but they are still looking great. They're Trump Kent just trying to stabilize this lane down bot side and it's not yep. exactly working that easily for them. So funny, oh, Jackie no. Love. <laughs> okay, gets out. Jackie Love already one shots cast of minions, like <laughs> he's at level seven and he one shots the back line of minions. It's just such a difficult position to play from for TT. Uh, three grubs will be taken here by top esports in the top side using that prio with the 369 grabbing. Uh, I think Cream able to get prior off the back of a reset as well in the mid lane. Also the fact that he's got two kills uh, and two assists to his name. It's not just the Draven that's ahead. Like they're ahead in literally all three lanes. And this like, when you're playing a Viego man, what do you do? Did you kill? When you're, yeah, when your team is this far behind in every lane, you just have no avenue into the game. Yeah, and normally you'd be like, oh, we can at least have enough gold to get one fight. It's 10 minutes in and you're already falling out Watch of the game. Cream is likely going to solo kill you, Cal. Maybe flash uh, at this point. He's got another flash Q. No point of flash queuing there. You already got him to base. Cal, like you were saying, even if he's falling behind, Cream would pick up some base DP. early gold. He'll get himself a malignant. And that's gonna get yeah, I don't like trading the flash there. I just don't think it's that even if you go good. It just adds risks oh, to the game and you don't even want to, like, create variants in the game if you're mid lane right now. You just want to yeah, allow your... Insanely strong Draven to just carry you to victory. About how Viego has been used by teams that are struggling to play more difficult compositions to just say, look, we get that first kill. This is now a very difficult composition to play. This has not ended up patching things over Mega and maybe angling for a hook, and he missed just about. So close. Oh no. Oh no. The flash. Jesus, bro. It's like that. Oh, that turret's fucking gone. I suppose. Jackalove's not really stacked up that much because I hung over. Nope. A couple of stacks, he cashes it in immediately. So the ult execute not doing that much. Oh shit! He hits those. Another hook lands. Tn. Can he follow up onto this one? I don't think so. The hostile takeover. I know W. I guess it's okay. That's so forced away. So many minions denied. Great equalizer in the top side. Oh my god! He just murdered him. And Hoyas just gonna be solo killed. <laughs> what a style game from Oh, he's just fucking they're just okay. dead. He's just dead as hell, right? With the flash we'll see. You can up here. Oh, then Oh, he flashed into it. Dude, the the way that route works is like kind of weird. Like the the time that it takes to proc is way quicker than you expect. I mean, how much of a style game is this? You do have three grubs to be so TT can at least get a plate back, but grubs. I mean, you're um, rotating your bot lane top when Drake's at 130. Um, See how they play it. I mean, he could just take a couple waves and then walk down. You're meant to be getting this at like, I don't know, 17, 18 minutes. You're going to get your first item like now. Um, he's very far ahead and he has that first turret on top of it. There's rewards dropped in the enemy jungle as well. It's very, very hard to catch top okay. esports off guard. They might be able to get Jackalov as he's over pushed his top lane. And currently alone, I don't yeah. think Ukel wins a 1v1 though is the problem. He's Even with a level lead, yeah. He's not winning that 1v1. And you can see that uh, Beichuan and Chocho are trying to move up. Oh my god, Ukel. Sees that he's running out of time at this play. It's so much. <laughs> Bro, you, this Draven is scary as fuck. I mean, on the bright side though, if you kill this Draven. They don't have like insane, insane damage. It's maybe winnable. Depends on like how the Draven dies. If the Draven gets one tap, then you can win super hard. Bro, he's just sitting here proxying. Nah, this just looks disrespectful. Sit that Gromp, yeah. Okay, Hoya, Hoya TP'd over here. Oh my god. Wait. I don't like how Jackie was playing this, bro. I mean, I guess it ended up working. Oh my god, he just murdered him. There's no reason for them to take this fight, by the way. There was literally no reason for them to take this fight. Their team was uh, just getting free stuff bot lane. Like, the TB came in. Top Esports could have just left here. 369 is getting really ahead off this. Like he's hitting, he's like whacking the tier two. 
plan all along, get the Draven fed, so and they have like Drake up. I mean, this is just really greedy. But this is just one of those fights you only take because you're like 5k gold up with Draven. You just try to style on them. It could be catastrophic though. I mean, 3 6 9 got the whole turret. Kind of crazy. Probably still happy with how the map is being played after this. And again, just look at how um, how far they're pushing in. At this point of the game, this is not the time mark you do this. You normally do this around, you know, Baron's call. The dragon's coming in later. They're level six. Yeah, like here they have complete option to, to leave. Like this hook from Mako is not good. And then the um the Karma just eat Nautilus. Dry E on Nautilus. Yeah, Cream just got fucking murdered. <laughs> his axes it's not often that you say that but if he's got axes there i'm pretty sure he just driven as well doesn't getting care. the cash out makes it worth somehow no it doesn't it doesn't make it worth it's too much like like sure like money wise it's probably worth because you get tier two turn and it's like a one for two but realistically in this game like you should not be trading anything back like the things that matter here are like draven flash draven cleanse like you're just giving them potential opportunity you're giving them a lifeline in the game where you should just be taking plays that are like, like if they're trying to burn draven flash and cleanse it's like their whole team should fucking die for it type shit i have never seen that kind of lead at this point in the game he has himself two and a half items and what i said this ad carry is no slouch he's on one of his comfort picks but this is just the power okay there's six nine trades for redacted ult Kian is over here. They see that everyone's um, top, so Jackalove can play really aggressively mid. Having that ultimate available, he can influence the fight even without showing up. He's got a collector now as well as a. Tier, do I think reworks Garner will be? I think it will be S tier probably. I mean, I, you'll have to see the numbers, but normally that's how reworks like that work, right? Okay, seventy-four stacks. He did get a kill in the previous fight, so. It's like it will either be S tier or in the future, like in the near future, it'll be S tier. Jagalove could have just autoed that turret, but whatever. I hope people now stop listening to delusional China fan Dom. Milky Way is nowhere near LCK talents like Lucid this season. Even losing to noobs like RNG. Laughing my ass off, clown emoji. I think at this point, 369, he's going to be that team fight facilitator whilst also doing big damage. So, TT, um, with two immobile backline carries, if they get tagged by that equalizer, I think the fight is over. I think that slow is actually enough for TT to just be blown away. So, what you're saying is Ryalai's second item for 369. I'm right there with you. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's almost a 6,000 gold lead now for Jackie Love. It's not bad, is it? Let's see what he picks up on the recall. No an Infinity way. Edge. Oh, good lord. He's I got an Infinity Edge. He's on three items. Is 17, almost 18 minutes into the game. My lord. This, this is... He's, he's mean, gone into practice tool and hit the gold button. He's just yeah. given himself a free 10k gold. It's like... I've, I've never in all my days have I seen such an individual lead and such an early, expensive three items. Sometimes you get with cheap ones, but 18 minutes... Yeah. This is absolutely absurd. Do you want to know the funniest bit about it all? Yeah. They're camming this bush. Oh, Tien found them. Oh, they're fucked. They're giga fucked. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, my God. He got three tapped. <clears throat> it's unfortunate for them that Baron isn't spawned yet. No way is that Hearthstone streamers? Who is that? I feel like I've seen that guy's face before. I don't know why I can't place who that is. Is that Trump? Nice play by you, Cal. An important pickup for TT. I just don't know if it's really going to be enough. Right, so they're going to go towards Baron. Oh, no, they're so far ahead that the Baron's not alive. That does occasionally happen. Top Esports again. They have Flash on Jackie Love now. Um, 
that makes it much easier for him to follow up and make the game winning play. Well, I mean, the game winning plays have already happened, but the game ceiling plays after this. Oh, so the, the hook. Oh, fake out. <laughs> Oh my god, run for your lives, bro. Jack is gonna three tap you. Nah, no way. Riding around, going towards the mid lane here. Just about gets past that corner. It's just a Baron start in 20. God damn, Jackie Love is fed. Almost has four items. 20 minutes. Also uses up the charge. So now the Herald yeah. will absolutely just die. Unfortunate. Okay, what are we gonna look at here? Yeah, okay, the, the bush camping topside. The problem is, this is a jungle and a support. They don't do damage. They teleport in with a little bit of damage, and it's late. Someone's already dead. The jungle's already gone. You don't have your resets available at that point. And then, um, this is just another meal for Jackie Love, who is absolutely monstering this game. This is one of the most individually dominant AD carry performances I've seen in a very long time. He is, again, this dude has just <laughs> stepped into practice tool, clicked gold a couple of times, and he's just walked away with a whole couple of bags of cash. Um, the only thing which TT are happy about is that he's not on a champion that can just jump forward all the time because he's a lower mobility carry than some but even that that's such a low <laughs> consolation price luckily for him he's got a nautilus so it doesn't really yeah. matter too much and on top of that he's just one tapping the baron so uh, he'll still be able to hit you from a million miles away and one turn is not like super super easy he was marking hoya well maybe could find a 50 50 smite if top esports might just be a uh, mako old bitch one and leave angle kind of oh yeah it's getting just Absolutely fucked. Okay, full turn. Nice. Okay. Tien died. He just didn't ult for some reason. It's actually pretty grief. Did he throw the whole game? He threw the whole game? Tien threw the whole game, bro. Tien actually griefed the entire game by not ulting. Oh, they get Baron here. We've done away with the top esports Baron flip, but this is the power of Viego and the Renata. Delay until you get that first kill. Dude, Tien just didn't want to ult. Look at this, bro. Imagine Tien just ults here. Into a replay to show that again in all its horrible glory. Mako flashes the moonshot from the Aphelios to avoid some damage. He still manages to get into the bailout and use that Inferno to get <laughs> Tien low. The turnaround damage of 1x set is what sets this up, and then Beitron slams home the home run the double reset here very Good flash from hoya him enough regen to the point where he doesn't hey, hold on do they lose the game now there. maybe they can't take the baron afterwards he then takes the draven's body use that to burn down the baron even quicker one xn wait do they actually i mean they should still win i guess that viego is like insanely fed now and it means i think it's why a lot of people don't like going cleaver second in games like this like i don't really see why tian needs cleaver it'd probably just be a sterax but I guess Sterex gets broken by Renekton potentially, but I feel like if Renekton empowered W's in, you in a fight, you've probably already won the fight. They're down five towers, right? Six to one. Um, but they're already up, you know, they're, they're within touching distance of the goals, considering where they were. If they can get onto a couple of these objectives, maybe they can get some big gold in pocket back. They're looking for a CC chain, maybe finish off Mako. Oh man, he ulted the other side, maybe it would be good. Wait, they're actually gonna lose this game. Wait, they actually just lost the game. <laughs> like what? This is so crazy. And they could use the Draven's body to push towers quicker as well with his extra AD. TT in such an important series for them. They are looking to get themselves. This is huge. I think the game is literally just won by them. It's like really easy for them to play into the Draven now at this point. Draven's no, yeah, Draven's not, not scary. I mean, Zin falls off, Rumble falls off. I mean, the whole team comp falls off. Now they're just late game with a team comp that outscales. GG. Top Esports get a 10,000 gold lead. A team with a 100% win rate when they're ahead. Their biggest lead of the split of being ahead. And yet, here we are with TT fighting back. Jackalove still ungodly strong. But if he doesn't have Flash, how does he survive some of these fights? I think that we can see now that if TT can reach him, he dies. He doesn't have a Renata to help him bail out. <laughs> it doesn't mean that Top Esports don't have a stat advantage. Baron Buff is just about to fall off in 
about 30 seconds as well, so there'll be some of the map advantage down. Like, the thing is, like, now they're just down so much experience as well. Everyone is down levels. Except for 369. This is the problem when you throw. It's like you, enemy team gets bounties, they get, like, close to even gold, and they're just going to be higher level than you. So how can play? Basic abilities. If the Nautilus dies, the Shin Sao dies, even the Karma as well. Just the resets and then the one round of regular abilities. Very, very powerful if Phage One can unlock it. it. Certainly can be. We have a a moment of, of stillness of quiet here in a game that has had a, it's more than a killer minute so far in this one. It's been action packed. Ucal should base go to Drake. What does he have? I mean, yeah, he's just ahead. He's just ahead of Cream. Sterax for Viego is really big. I mean, now, like, Jackalove probably needs an LDR. And his income is stalled out. Dragon spawning now. Top East was chosen not to stand on their vision of bot side jungle. They stole top side blue buff instead and now fighting towards mid lane of trial. This is again going to be about that first pick. Vagewon takes a little tap. Oh? Is there oh yeah? No, this oh no, that was terrible by them. They get one back though, no? They get one back? Oh, Vagewon. Vagewon's griefing. Oh! What XN? Oh, he does. Oh, he didn't get the combo. Dude, Mantra Q is holy fuck. Wait, so top esports just like completely through the game. The game was like pretty much just just lost for them at this point, and then they just won it when it was lost. So they threw the most unlosable position possible into winning a hard position. Nice. Oh, the hero juice runs out. Thunder Talk Gaming. This is such an important series for them. They need at least a series win to keep themselves in the playoffs race. Likely even more than that, let's be honest, they have themselves a hard schedule. It's not going to be the game right now, but that could have been such a big moment. They just about miss out on a couple of key different resets. Toya dies very, very quickly at the start of this. Chocho doesn't get the hostile takeover right here. I think that would have been such a big difference for them. It comes in a little bit late, even though we can see that Mako does end up being flashed away from. Beitron can't quite get the reset on him. I think Cream does a really good job alongside Tian from blocking him out. And then 1XN almost almost gets oh, if he got the auto off maybe he kills actually Mako stands a bit close to Dracula. there's a chance that the actual splash damage kills him as well from the multi-man inferno not quite there the hero play fails nice try for one xn i think you're absolutely right i think if if mako's next to him i think that's a kill one xn the inferno really has been the name of the game for tt so far yeah. i hear people Three bitching about lbl fight. being boring Just yeah no, that's the classic man i'm seeing a lot of that recently he's not playing as the you know kite back character. i mean i talked to other people about it it's like it's weird that the perception that you know this this is something I, that i think is so so strange so t1's macro in the lck in spring when people thought they were like the best team in the world by far right this is spring last year this is the most hype they ever had this is more hype than they had going into worlds this is by far like the most hype they were <laughs> At this point, T1, like, would routinely ignore safe macro plays and just outplay the opponents by, like, flipping Baron. They would just go to Baron and, like, start at 20 minutes. They would always macro based off trying to outplay the enemy, right? Like, that was how they played macro, was we're going to show up to things that are not, like, the best things possible, but we're just better than you, so we're going to win. Somehow, people love that gameplay from T1, but they, like, hate when LPL teams do literally the same thing. It's so weird to me. Mako's like 1 HP. Yeah, 1XN has the rifle turrets. If you walk over them and you disrespect them, you're gonna die. Very, <laughs> they do a figure. But I mean, literally, like, I just don't know. It's like, do, do people just not know what they're looking at? Or what? But no ultimate from Quave. No flash available on him either. Chocho, no ult. Big tools. Mako's ult when he comes back. Mako's like survived the play. 
Mako's in base right now. The top esports cannot fight this second. Taking red. They get mid prio. They can move into the river. This is their chance to regain control. And TT. Does he have. Wait, he's not going. Um, sort of he's not going uh, LDR. Okay. So Infernum up for one this is this is a crazy Baron start from TT. They're like throwing the whole game by doing this, bro. Like what? I mean, I guess not throwing because they are behind, but like this is literally just an unwinnable thing that they're going for here. Oh, Jackie Love is just getting a pentakill or some bullshit. <laughs> All right, GG. This was a really Lost sketchy game, though. Is Draven, and he makes this game his game. There were some hero plays, but Thunder couldn't strike enough. Top Esports walking away with a heartbreaking blow to TT. The thunder was loud, but unfortunately, the lightning struck elsewhere. Fantastic game from Top Esports, snowballing the early game like crazy. It nearly got away from them, but that 100% win rate when ahead of 15 stays intact after all. And uh, we'll just pretend it was clean, shall we? We'll pretend that, that was an easy one. The early game certainly was, the mid game, not so much. TT, they are going to be kicking themselves. Bro, we got some super copium on the timeline, bro. Super copium. Says, I'm by far the best AD carry in the LEC. I think I'm better at laning, team fights, macro, micro. By far, he's the best. That's what he says, bro. I quote retweeted it. I said, saying this while being in eighth place in the LEC is nasty work. And we get the response from fans well upset was 10th but you were still praising him to high heavens so what does that mean what, what does this team's placing have to do with anything by your own logic i mean number one if he's referring to last year there was never a time last year where i was actually bigging up upset when they were 10th place which was at the end of summer like that was like when the team just like completely failed you can't just say like oh I, I said that like upset was good when they were like third place in spring and then be like oh well you also said that in summer it's like no like that didn't happen last year. So, and this split with Cake, when, when have I been talking like super well about upset on K Corp? Like I still, like I, all I would say was that Bo and upset are the best players on the team, but I never said he was like the best city carry in LEC or anything close to that um, right now. The time where I did say upset was 10th place was, or, or upset was good while he was 10th place was when he was uh, with that terrible origin team in summer of 2020, which I hope he's referring to that or he's just like lying, you know, but um where in that time I was completely inferring that his teammates were dog shit. Like I thought his teammates were actually just fucking terrible. Um, I thought their support jungle specifically, like I thought the Xerxes Jack troll pairing was just terrible. I thought, ja I, th I thought Jack troll just wasn't LEC level. He's literally lading with somebody who hasn't been in LEC since then. Right. Then yes. And the implication uh, was that his teammates were shit. No, the implication can also be that the team doesn't work well together at the moment. And you know that. So he's claiming that Mad Lions, whose biggest strength is their team play, is a team that is not working well together at the moment, but Supa is still the best AD carry in the league. I don't know, bro. I don't fucking know. That's crazy. Merlin responds to this tweet is, is hilarious. Yeah, it's like Callist owning him. Bro, Callist actually destroyed Supa. What's wrong with my camera? What do you mean what's wrong with it? Is there something wrong with it? Let's watch this. JDG voice comms. JDG's mic check. You can't eat the banana now. <laughs> 
。如果这把鏖战五十分钟，我在台上晕倒的话，你们的良心应该会过不去吧？没事，万磊会帮你出头的。裁<笑>判，帮上路拿点纸。改成。裁判，上路要纸，听到了吗？啊，听到了，听到了。Okay. 我这有纸，要不用我的吧？别用他们的了。可以啊，你给我抽一点眼睛。来，好、哦，谢谢。哇、wow、哦，<笑>我有一个，干嘛？残残点纸给我。<笑>给弗兰德，给弗兰德。那<笑>、啊、OK， 哈哈。给我张纸，一分。Wait, what happens if they do voice comms with Sheer and then Sheer just has like the most Giga Chan manly voice ever? Look, it Sheer just sounds like Yamato or some shit. Dude, that would be so based. Now I'm hoping for it. I'm 我做做不上这个传送门。好，我好，我反馈一下。One hour later。嗯，不行，直接开吧，我走过去也行。稍等，我反馈一下。那别想听啊！<笑>有没有换点错了？你可能是取消了。稍等。这裁判，我自己失误开吧。稍等，我们这边看一下啊。Two hours later。好了吗，裁判？稍等一下，还没好。走过去吧，不差你这点时间。Time is not a problem <笑>。各位选手，我们还需要稍等一下啊，马上好。Three hours later。我们快要恢复游戏了哦。啊、uh.。准备好了，准备好了，准备准备，准备好了，好的好的，没事，加班加油加油，啊、嗯、加油加油 ，It's fine working overtime， <笑>加油。呆呆呆呆，带带带带没事不？我在靠，他没闪他没闪，你快拿手，哎没闪，快快快，还行，我操，这么这么溜，走了走了走了。厉害厉害，可以，还可以。哎，你给我踢出来，可以看一下虫子吧。我可以看。嗯。我补完状态，我踢了。嗯，好的，这这踢。来来来，你先抢一个。好。我先推完上，可以再来，可以吗？过来过来过来过来。我直接来，我直接来。不能不能不能。让我先。过来过来过来过来过来。我来来来来来，没问题没问题。东没血，东。哎也没闪的。直接打直接打。东没血，东一一一滴血。绝对听话，没问题。没问题，没问题。OK。好兄弟。Follow the orders, bro. What is this music? What's going on? Am I getting copyright striked on YouTube? Probably. He gets one, I remember. AD, nice. Lisa and God. Wait, did they end this game at some point or no? Oh, what a kick! Oh, 
，卡马过不来，卡马过不来。大意思啊？呃，他没上，他没上。有。来这把被零分，大家别死好吧？好好好，再看一下刚刚这波，先去把 Q 波赶走 ，Q 波闪现交的很快，那就不杀你了。正面这一脚有点帅，配上 Missing 的台。哎 ，The kick was really clean。过去，啊，三个，落台三个。Into Recon three man W。GG。波岩躲恶意收购，再 Q 回来。卡式三角杀。The Kanavi Triangle. 真的在打素材，我说实话，这波。今天上比赛打把素材。Creating content during the match, okay? 啊，一波一波一波一波一波一波一波一波一波。等等等等。一波吗？啊，不不不可以一波，我觉得不可以一波。大龙不行，换大龙吧。要不要去大龙？感觉有机会。试一下吗？试一下呗。好好好，我先阿 Q， 等阿 Q。我来扛。A D 没闪 ，A D 没闪，血到血到血到，我扛我架上架上，我扛我扛。I thought how was like okay， 推不掉了，追，推不掉追大龙，走吧走吧走吧走吧，推推不到了。啊啊，谢谢谢谢，这个这个这个这个这个，走走走走走，走走走走走，我看一下看一下看啊，我看不了，走走走走走，该走了该走了，走走走走。剑魔五秒 T P， 有 T P 了，剑魔复活了有 T P， 好久没掉死了，我救一下走。走走走走走走走，来了架上，走走走，大龙要丢的，没事没事，剑魔没踢，剑魔没踢，六六六六六。一波买针眼，然后一波吧。好，我失败装备。我觉得不要等了。好好好好。走掉了。好一波。不好拖架，其实有水晶。但我们能拖住啊，他们回不去。他们真的出来很深的，我去快拖架。好啊，走。哦，这么。踢吗？踢吗？踢踢吧，踢吧，踢吧。Bro, what is happening? What are these edits, bro? I don't know what's going on. 你拆架，你拆架，我去打断他。我打断了，打断了，卡玛打断了。哎，这边火了。拆架拆架拆架，拆架拆架拆架拆架拆架拆架拆架，一波了一波，一波拆架，太神了是我，是，好激情，露露啊。Yeah, they threw. I remember this game. They threw the fuck out of this game. Game was free win. 是的，你死第一个。
<laughs> and then after that, they played. Yeah, dude, they actually played. Um, week seven, they played Monday, Thursday, Saturday, and then they played the next Monday afterwards. And then they played today against um, Weibo. So in a week and a half, they play five best of threes. And they played two the week before. So in a two week span, they're playing seven best of threes. It's actually fucking crazy. Yeah, in two weeks, they can play more games than you can in a whole LCS split. I mean, technically, they could play more in, in, in a week and a half, but in the old LCS splits where you got at least 18 games, they could get more games than that in literally 11 days. During that nine-day period, do they scrim at all? Yeah, they're scrimming and they have to travel, bro. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is maybe uh, like they maybe they don't have to travel that much during that period because it could be that they have like a bunch of home games in a row so like all the games are in beijing so maybe they're the home team for a lot of them but the point is they're on the fucking grind all right right back one second i'm gonna play the ads now For Tian. Okay. Let's see it. Why are there a bunch of dumb wides? Keep worrying about ads and somebody just gifted me a sub born to be a pleb. Hey, you got the fuck it and you're just institutionalized, bro. It is what it is. You're institutionalized. Bro, today we got a long ass day, by the way. I'm preparing and we did IRL stream yesterday. We did an I I don't know if, if people saw. It actually did pretty well. We um did an IRL stream. Me and Gurlius. We did a beer tier list. We went to a German pub and got like eleven different beers. Not bad. Test them all. It was a pretty good stream. And then today we have a long ass fucking day. Go for the Twitch stream. It's here. That was fun. It's like nice just being on somebody else's stream and just like chilling, you know? Bro, the people were uh were taking care of us because we went to like a just a I guess like a standard German pub, like an authentic German pub. Um, and like the people there were super nice. They gave us uh wait, what is this? Wait, does that do anything? 
Does that change the sound? That do it. What the fuck? It, there was just a megaphone thing that was on my Go XLR this whole time. Um, but yeah, they like the guy next to us just saw that we were like they, they, he asked where I was from. They could tell that we were speaking English, and he just bought us a like rolled beef German dinner. It was like a like it was it almost was like a pot roast with beef that was like rolled with cabbage. Super good. He just bought it for us, bro. We didn't even know him. It's fucking sick. And then at the end, um, like we did a let we we tried eleven beers, and then they 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 asked us which ones we liked the most. Yeah, it was roulade and yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um. We had this like rolled beef, whatever. And then they asked us what drinks we liked the most. And at the end, they brought us like what, what beer we liked the most out of the 11 that we tried. And then he, he brought us two glasses of our favorite one, like on the house. And then got us like two shots of like their Berlin peppermint liquor on the house as well. It was like insane. I mean, I just, I, I like, I felt bad. So I just made sure I like tipped. I tipped like 30 euros. It was like a 70 five euro bill but i mean dude we got 11 beers we got a currywurst the beef thing from the other guy um like the like a dinner pretty much from the other guy plus two two shots plus two more beers on top so we got 13 beers two shots two plates uh, of food yeah for like 76 dollars so i was like okay bro i could like easily just tip 30 like you're not getting that for anything under like 100 in the states Got some hospitality, bro. 369 is just trying to abuse his conqueror because he is conqueror and Hoya has grasp. They get the experience, they both end up missing all the gold. This trade will be, I mean, this will be good for 369 in the long run because he has more sustain. And he has push power. Two plates, it's like 700 gold. Holy, bro, it's like 250. You play this goddamn game? The fuck? How am I still not drunk? I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't really get hung over. Like, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think like because we split the beers. I mean, it was like I guess we had like five, six beers and a shot apiece. Yeah, I don't know. We're fine. I was like a little bit tired today. That's it. Surprisingly, I'm not fucked up either. All right. I mean, I don't know. You look a little fucked up. Not gonna lie. Just kidding. Don't hurt me. Don't come beat my ass on stream, please. So who has the best beers? NA or EU? So my favorite beers are Belgian beers. I've never had like authentic German beers. I mean, I still like Belgian beers more than German beers. So if there's a place here that does like Belgian beers, I'd be so down. You'd imagine the 369 is just gonna potentially just push this in, go for a reset himself. Let's, let's take a look at the junglers. Tien resetting on the bottom side. Right, Duvel, I've had Duvel before. I've had Duvel in a pub with like the Duvel glass or whatever that's supposed to make it taste better. I've done it. Back out onto the map with Doran's Blade and Longsword. We've seen this a lot from junglers. We saw it from Milky Way earlier in the day as well. Particularly in games like this, where you know. I tried Guinness. Yeah, I don't like Guinness. I'm not a fan of dark beers, but they did have a dark beer that was actually really good. All right, so. Happening in this game. It's kind of boring. It's just full clear into full clear. Full clear, base, full clear. Yeah, standard. Can't buy D Blade anymore on jungle in. This game, this early game, yeah. is a little bit more like what we in league on the 14-6 patch, which I think is kind of dumb to be honest. I feel like being able to buy Doran's Blade, I think that that just gives you agency in the jungle. You know, like you can make a decision there. Like it, it's not like 
Doran's Blade is so OP that everyone has to buy it every game. And if you do choose to buy a Doran's Blade and you delay your spike with other items, I do think that that is like an interesting trade-off um, and something that should be able to be done in the jungle, you know? I think the, fa the idea that they just completely removed it, I think is just weird. I can understand not wanting to have it in bot lane with support items. I think that's kind of broken, like having Ash start a D-Blade and just like completely shit on you level one. That seems like it's actually broken. But D-Blade jungle, I don't think is giga broken. How's OMG looking this year? They're, they're okay. They're not, they're not bad. They're not great. Probably end up being a playoff team. Probably just be a playoff team, maybe like a round one exit playoff team. Maybe they can max out and be fifth, sixth. It'd be huge if that team got fifth, sixth, though. Like, if OMG was able to get to that position with the team that they put together, it's a big win for the York. Nice from TT's ball, and they have heal. Oh, Yukal has ult? Oh, Yukal has no ult. Never mind, he ulted when he walked into the bush. Okay, big. Cream is just dead. Clean from Tien. Nice, bro. Fully stack lethal. Gets the Q away. Oh, he's dead. Nice from Yukal, bro. Nice from Yukal. Okay. The mid jungle 2v2, even with a counter. Really going bad. Bot lane now still fighting. Oh, that glitter lance slow. I think might have Ooh, the timing, bro. That damage waits for the shield to go down. Damn, he waited for the shield to go down. He had the Kershi shard proc along with the double auto. That's good damage estimation, bro. Good damage estimation. I mean, I don't play Lucian, but I didn't think that was going to kill. Comboing up with his jungler bot side, though. Jack 11 Maker once again catching out Shocho. It's not the first time that's happened. And here we're going back to that mid jungle TV2. Tien actually starts off and he's used his counter. He's used his lead. Wait, where was the. um? Where was the Nico ult? I thought he ulted when he came into the bush. Where, where was the Nico ult? What? He just ulted mid and we didn't see it or what happened? I'm, I was looking at chat. I need to see. He said that there was a lot of responsibility on this Nico to be a bit of a hero player. Really think this is part of that. Gold in hand. This Nico is going to be scary later on. And we straight into the TVT on bot side. We've already seen this fight go massively. Um, in both yeah, when did he Nico? Comes out ahead here. Oh, he just did it mid lane when we were watching bot lane and he blew a flash. So that's what happened. You see him shield himself in a second here. Dash forward. Jackalup doesn't go for the auto. Waits for the shield. And then flashes to get the prop from Mako's Tide Caller's Blessing as well. Super would do that better? Yeah. Super is really, he's just the best AD carry by far, which is why he plays like the skill-based AD carries. Like Lucian Nami. That's why he's playing like those types of AD carries and he doesn't just like perma-pick Varus and Senna. And he won't just fall off a cliff when they're both nerfed. He is not just a fucking son of merchant. When you play League, any chance you play on stream in the future? Yeah, I'll play on Sunday. I mean, today there's too much co-streaming, so it's like impossible for me to play, really. But um, on Sunday, I'll do like a uh, solo queue stream after LPL. That's the plan. Doing a little climb, an EU West climb. I was, I wanted to queue up last night. Like I wanted to drunk queue up last night, but Gillies told me not to. He's like, bro, you're gonna, you're gonna regret it in the morning if you lose like two games. It actually will hurt your climb. Bro, surely I can, I can climb Diamond to EU West while drunk, right? Surely. Hey. Oh, Mako misses both. Uh, <laughs> skill shots were flying. No, I didn't know Gurlius was a DGGer. Yeah, Destiny is her favorite content creator. I mean, Destiny is one of my favorite content creators as well, to be honest. <laughs> like, 
I just find Destiny fucking hilarious. I don't know. Most of today. Obviously, the 2v2 is not really working out, but I do feel like that's mostly on Cho Cho. And I am an AD carry player myself, so maybe I'm biased. Hard to say without going back and re watching the bots, but either way, one extent has had some really great moments. The Aphelios moments in the previous game as well, where even though the game is feeling doomed, trying to take things into his own hands and understanding the game. 35 year old man, yep. Knows that even as a fellows, you can be the setup champion and then the Viego can be the carry instead. So definitely a player that over the next couple of years, I'm going to be keeping my eye on. I really hope we get to see him on a roster that looks like a contender. Yeah, and TC last year, you know, they brought him in halfway through the year. Um, one XN the GOAT. Looked like they could do something special, but just again, Not like one XN. I think he's good. He's got talent. Okay. Yukal thought he'd be able to close the distance. Like, that was a play where he didn't want to trade flashes. His idea was that he thought that he could get him still with Protobell flash, even if the guy flashed and was close, but didn't end up hitting. Which should actually be pretty big for top esports because I feel like top esports, not, not only do they get six grubs here, but they should also be contesting this next Drake, I think. They have Static Shiv completed on Lucian. Jax is going to be one item. I mean, he should have his item by then. So I think this should be a contest. Yeah, it should be a contest from top. TN should just clear these two camps and base. Go Drake. Oh, yeah. Ooh. might be dead. Uh, actually, I mean, he has ult. Maybe he doesn't die. He can maybe play it. He can maybe play it, so... You. Oh, he he eat into it, bro. He eat into the W. I think he just had to hold it, probably W Bage one, and try to stall out for another Q. They didn't even use a uh, flash or anything to kill him. It's actually pretty big. Because now it's no flash, no ulti Renekton. Yeah, six grubs over to top esports. It's gonna make things a little harder if six grubs. I wonder if they even like contest this Drake then. Because 369 has no um no old flash, right? So maybe you just don't contest this Drake, you just stay top and play for grub damage on turrets. Dealing with a Renekton with high rage, every ability is so disgustingly powerful. It's gonna get two empowered ones in here and get the empowered Q. Um there's just not enough. He doesn't have the Q up for the pack after this fight. He's got a couple of seconds left on his Q. And he got hit by everything here. He is point two or point one second away from getting his Q healing back there. So, so close. Might have been able to survive. Why is Dom so quiet about Milky Way losing to RNG, bro? You've been trying to bait everything for like days, man. It's so fucking boring. At least just do it better. He said, I love seeing T1 fans cry. It's my daily medicine, my weekly energy, my monthly inspiration, and my yearly motivation. Their loss is the only reason I'm still alive. I was born to love and enjoy the failure that they have achieved. You did that copy pasta four times in a row. Then you said, Spain owns you. You're a gambling addict. And then you said, of course, the guy criticizing Matt is undereducated. You wish you were good enough to be in Mad. I will dominate. Are you mad because Mad is better than you ever were? What happened to your boy Milky Way? Better season than Faker, my like. I mean, you've just been trying for so long. I mean, Tien already has Triforce, and then gets himself two plates there and the first tower of the game. The guy is so bored, yeah. I didn't even respond to him until right then. He had literally been doing it for hours. <laughs> Least obvious bait. Exactly, bro. You need a chat voice emote. <laughs> that, that, that is actually just how I read every, like, cringe message with that voice in my head. A lot of the team fight from TT is going to hinge on big burst damage coming out from you, Cal. Why should Lucian? Just now, if one really is broken. Lucian, item is just broken. Um, and it's actually a Jax who has That's it. A slice of sky. There's no like inherent synergy with Shiv and Lucian. It's just that the item is broken, so you build the broken item. Too cheap. The stats are too good. GG. All of those grubs in terms of the other tower pushing objectives. We don't want to give over the Herald. We start it up. I like taking a best of five FPX or Hanwha? I mean, I'll take Hanwha life. Okay. Well, so 
They got a pretty good Nami ult here. I think they could win this. 369 is like mega unkillable. He just got to slice through the whole enemy team. But goes on to 1xn here. Oh, Jackie Love could have actually went on other people. Hmm. Probably like they could have got more out of this. I mean, they did get a bunch of flashes, though. Minions. He isn't there for the big damage. And TT, though they do manage to get themselves a kill on the jungler, importantly so, they don't get the Herald, they don't get a game-winning fight or a really big fight to get themselves the objective. Black Cleaver. Okay. Under turret, trying to wave play. He'll surely be done. Eh? Nah, this isn't a thing. This is not a thing, I don't think. Is it? Wow, does he actually do that much? Wait, Cream does so much fucking damage. Never mind, bro. It's it's free. Click on the tower. Click on it. Observe Please. this. Come on. Let me know. Oh, one come HP. On. It's gotta be. One HP. Well, there's one or two either way. Um, even <laughs> Rogue vs. Giants today? Yeah, I know, bro. But you know, it's like low-key a really important match. <laughs> even if it is, like, kind of dumb, like the match is kind of dumb, it's a, it's a really important one. Top Esports, the fight, despite the fact that they lost their jungler for the Herald, have shown once again their early game understanding and positioning have just been superior like the winner of that match is tied with mad lions and uh, k corp with in wins you know they're going to be behind a lot of gold they're going to be going into very tanky carries this time because the jacks is going to be a problem 369 is going to be a problem Dude, how fed is this karma what the fuck i didn't even realize cream was doing his thing Dude, it's crazy because cream is like not even He's not even playing cream chain. We're not in a cream meta at all, and he looks pretty fucking good. He's been one of the most consistent players on this lineup. It's all well and good that you get that pick onto TN, but the problem is if you use your pop blossom onto just a singular player, it doesn't mean the rest. Can't wait to have Dom scream in agony that game. Yeah, I'll be screaming in agony that game for sure. This time away from so huge. The other thing is got a double dash through everyone, just trying to apply his cleaver much as he can see here i think i think jaggy love should have just dashed towards baitual no instead of dashing towards zary and trying to like one tap him would be cream meta silas a call i mean the real cream meta is when we get into a fucking like if we get into a meta with like kiana and shit it's fucking over for the league bro if we get into a meta where you're actually playing like real real assassins he's gonna be the fucking goat I don't know if we'll ever have it a, a Keanu meta in pro play because Keanu's just so OP in solo queue when it's good in pro play that just won't make sense for it unless they would like rework the champion or something. But um, like the cream meta that I'm talking about that's more realistic is Silas Akali meta. Like Silas Akali Yone meta. He's really fucking good at those champs. Melee mids is what cream is special on. But he's been good on, on mages, bro. Like he doesn't look like he's outclassed playing mages against people in LPL. He looks completely fine incredibly strong yeah, so dragon is up in 20 seconds tt even though they got some okay vision looks like they're just trying to get some gold back on the board saying look we just need to get some vision uh, some the second item which one makes sense a big fun moment for him we can get towards that try and get some uh tower gold but top esports they're just gonna keep pushing they're not even going towards the dragon on spawn they're saying well if you want to start getting gold we're gonna not even gonna go towards the dragon and waste our time we'll delay and see if we can get ourselves to stop it okay 369 getting four man i mean they're just gonna get bot turn off this this is like super fake to do this by the way what are they doing they're playing at six grubs they're so out tempoed and drive this one again they're gonna get mid tier two as well and they're gonna get bot tier three ah oh, this macro from tt is criminal oh they didn't actually get uh mid tier two all right so they got two higher value turrets and it means that there really is no counter play for tt it's fucked. That was a big mistake from TT. They wanted to say, okay, we'll put our people into top lane, just take that turret while you're taking the LPL top six teams look really good. Yeah, Playoff's gonna be exciting. I mean, even the first round, I think, is gonna be fun well, as well. We'll gold 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 I think the first round will be, like, pretty good. And LOG is getting their shit together. Like, LG, the, even though LOG doesn't look as good as they, like, should be, because people have this ex expectation that they should be a top team in the LPL, They've been improving. Like, they've kind of figured out how they want to play. They have some, like, comps that they're playing that other people aren't. For example, they're back on the Jace Maokai, which LG was really good at in LPL. It was one of their biggest strengths. When they were, um... Yeah, when they were good last year. They're figuring things out. Also, like, Kai'Sa being back in the meta is obviously really good for LG because they have the best Kai'Sa player of all time 
on their roster. So I actually think that like LG will like LG could be scary, bro. Like LG could beat FPX easily in a best of five, right? We'll see how things end up working. Horizon focus, malignance, huge damage combo from Cream. We teleported up to the top side of the map to help that tower push come in. The reason they can play like this is because they have the six scrubs. It is. And then also, I think the the other thing that makes LPL playoffs exciting is that um, NIP has been looking better recently. I mean, they have the test coming up soon, right? They play against Top Esports BLG to end the year, so we'll see if uh, how NIP perform in those matches. But definitely in the most recent series, NIP just looks like they're playing better league, even if they're playing versus not as good opponents. Their macro is significantly better than it was before. This feels very difficult for TT to contest, and I love the way that they're playing with the Karma and the Lucian as fundamentally a poke competition, right? Lucian, I, I say this all the time, loads of people say this all the time. Lucian is fundamentally a poke champion in a lot of compositions where you use that rapid fire cannon, die forward, get a burst of damage, and get back out again. And the Karma can set up for that as well. Oh, that's very true. It, it's sometimes a bit more conditional because it's not as quick poke as something like a Jace putting down a shock blast. And sometimes you need a bit of vision just so when you jump forward, you're not just immediately jumped onto the floor. But the culling is so long range and so high. Damage. BLG gonna win 2 0. I mean, BLG didn't even 2 0 um, OMG with the sub, bro. So. Unless you're playing something like a Pallista. And he could definitely win games. And then throw the support at you and say, go, choose the Pokemon and stop yeah. the uh, Lucian from dashing at you. You look at TT's composition, though. The only way you stop Lucian jumping in is with you can really. I think that even someone like Koya jumping over a wall is not going to be enough to stop Lucian from just doing his thing. So a lot of it is on Yukal, but if he's in the lane, wave code, because he's in mid lane, he needs to be in another lane getting farmed somewhere. Um, or if he's on vision, which the top esports team is doing well at uh, maintaining when Jackalov has been going aggressively, TT run out of options, and that means that Jackalov, one of the most aggressive mechanical AD parries that the LPL has to offer, gets I think I is better on Lucian next patch. This is just a double I mean, I think it, it depends, right? The the IE decision versus versus Navary is just like how much do you need the mobility and the reset. Like IE will be more burst. You're just gonna like E forward double like E W double auto Q double auto. You get more damage out of IE, but an extended fight Navary can out damage. Instantly deleted. It's not even a dragon up. I'm not 100% sure why Top Esports are fighting so hard for the bomb side of the map, to be honest. Because they want to keep up vision, stop TT getting their own jungle camps. This is one of the big things which happens when you're ahead in the game. You can't get your own jungle camps. Each camp that you take from the enemy jungle is, you know, 200, 300 gold in your favor. And because they don't want to have TT getting up to their own um, items, and they don't want them to get. Rise of this Drake actually went to from UCAL, uh, TT. Full court, full court it's a slow burn for sure, but Hobby Sports is in pretty good position. Should just win. Get back out onto the map. I mean, it's just a full court press. TT, they have very few options. They don't even have. Uh, they don't even have like flank. LPL oh, not like TF anymore. Uh, some teams like TF. Just depends on the um players. Like these players don't play much TF. I mean, Hoya plays it and play it, but I don't think he's great at it. Um, TF has been played by like Wayward. Flandre was playing it a decent amount, but now he's subbed for Sheer. Ben actually hasn't played TF, I don't think. But yeah, it's, it's just certain teams play it. Certain teams play it, other teams do not. Uh, Zika plays it as well. Yeah. Depends on the team, I guess. Go two items has his rocket belt, has that Sonya's as well. So, can get okay. tier two top and scrapping over this bush while his teammates hit top or his teammate hits top. It's good. You call engaging, got on to Jackie Love, one shot Jackie Love. This is a huge engage. Well played. Oh, that was really good. Oh, Zeri died. Oh, Zeri died. Tien will be able to do some work here. Get the cinders, bro. Get the fucking cinders, mate. Run to the cinders, Chocho. That was really nice from you, Cal, but not enough, bro. My all-pro team for LPL this split.
giving so much gold to TN. They gave him the tower in boss fight. First tower gold. I would go. With it. He is now at two and a half items as a Jax jungle. Yeah, he can be the carry, even though the bot lane is Ooh, let me see my, my all pro team. Okay, I would go 369. Gotta do Milky Way. Um mid lane. Is it just Knight? Like Knight just like the thing about Knight is like I do think he's the best, but he does just like int in really frustrating ways sometimes. But I guess I would just put Knight. Um probably like Knight Elkin missing. I think part of that as well is the 369 TP'd in behind, so Hoya couldn't really just ch oh. Oh, that, that Mikhail's was insane, by the way. Holy fuck, bro. You, he, like, barely even got stunned by the Renekton. PS can turn this. Oh, Jackie Love eat into the, um, into the root, though. Wasn't good. Or eat into the Poppy W. Oh, good poly? Doesn't matter. Yeah, here's the turn. GG. They can end. Oh, maybe not. No, Jackie Love died. Maybe they can end. Let's see. Let's see. It's going to be pretty close. Like, they have Wave. They have Jax. They have six scrubs, actually. They should be able to end. They should TP and end, I think. It was a valiant attempt from Thunder Talk after almost miracle making in game one and finding some hero plays in game two. Not Ruler. I don't think Ruler had, like, an exceptional split. The split. He didn't seem like he was as good as he was last year. I'll take Elk over him this split. I mean, the way that BLG played was like heavily through bot lane as well, and it felt like Elk was performing almost every game. Eleven wins on the board now for top esports. Couple of respawns, but it's too little, too late. Top esports. I believe at this point, getting very close to locking in top four. They're really do they did they lock it in top four with this? Desperately close to finding those hero moments in both games. No, they didn't. They didn't because technically, technically, well, actually, no. I think they locked top four. Yeah, they locked top four with this win because FPX can't catch them in terms of game score. So that means that they're guaranteed going to be at least the um the second or the sorry the second the third round I guess is the best way to say it. At least be in third round. Yeah, they sh they should lock top four here. NIP could te technically pass them because top esports could go 11 and 5, or top where NIP can technically go 12 and 4. But um, with FPX's loss, the best that FPX can do is 11 and 5. Top esports, even if they lose their next two, would be 11 and 5 themselves, and their game score is too good for FPX ever catch. So they did lock top four. He said very, he said very close. Yeah, I think he's wrong. Or I mean, I just think, I think it's actually just locked. I think he just didn't want to, I think he was just covering his base. He didn't want to say something incorrect. It was the second best mid after night. Feels, it, it's so close to spring. I mean, there's a couple options that you have. Um, like, I would say, like, uh, there's like outside options. Like, if you want to be like mega edgy, I mean, you could talk about um, the fact that Shanks has had actually a really good split, even though his team is not that great. But um, Cream has been solid. Yagao has still been good, by the way. Yagao is still a good player. One of the best players. Then after that, like, Rookie's also in that conversation. Yeah. Like, those are the guys. And then, like, I would say Fofo has been performing well. Angel's been, like, an outside pretty good performer. So those are the guys I'm looking at. about scout scouts had a bad split by his uh by his standards but i mean still he's probably like performed as like the eighth best mid laner in the lpl just still like it's not bad you know like it's not it's not like disgusting to be the eighth best mid laner but his standard is to be like the best or like at minimum like top three Anyway, but now it is officially locked in. They can't get any lower than fourth place. And we'll see who 
who else is going to get in that top four? There's one more slot remaining. It's the disrespect to Vikla. I mean, Vikla has been playing well now. Like, if if you only took into account the last, like, five, six series, then, yeah, Vikla has been a huge standout on RA. The problem is that before that, he was a massive liability. He was, like, running it the fuck down. It's kind of the same problem with Scout. Like, Scout and Vikla just had such poor early splits. Or, like, yeah, such poor early splits in LPL that it's just, yeah, it's just doomed. They can't, yeah, they can't atone for those sins. Also, the, the problem is that LNG had pretty hard schedule. They played against all, like, the good teams early on in the split. So him, like, performing better against worse teams is not going to compensate for the fact that, like, versus the people that he's supposed to be competing with, he kind of got stomped. It is in some ways. Jackie Love good compared to his IG days. Yeah. I mean, Jackie Love might be one of the most underrated players in LPL by Western fans. I've been saying this for like about a year now, but I still think it's true. Like Western fans have this idea of Jackie Love that he's just some mega inter where he just like griefs permanent. Like every time, like every game, he just like runs it down. He's just like some psycho. Like they think that Jackie Love is tactical. That's how Western fans think of Jackie Love. They think that he is like... Tactical Tristana Malphite ulting into the enemy team. But in reality, it's like that does not happen frequently. It happened frequently in 2022 summer like finals versus JDG. Like it happened multiple times in one series. But generally speaking, Jackie Love is like. I mean, Jackie Love might actually. I mean, honestly, maybe Jackie Love could be um, all pro first team AD carry. Like he's been really fucking good this split. Yeah, he probably, maybe he deserves it over Elk. Hard to say. Why 369 over Bin still? Bin just does it all now. I mean, Bin is essentially just playing a weak side. Like, he's playing weak side almost every game. And 369 just does it better. He's up. About to hit 100k on YouTube. Oh shit. The fact that the team is nice. literally like giving him first tower and a bunch of solo yeah. plates. Like, how often do you see a jungler gifted that? Uh, but Top Esports knowing that they can carry from the jungle via TN. And uh, yeah, fantastic stuff. I mean, the jungle meta in LPL feels pretty exciting to me. Like, Xin Zhao, Jax, Lee Sin, Kindred's in there, occasionally Brant going in. Lots of carries, lots of ability to, to push the game forward as a jungler. And it feels like the jungle pool, not just in terms of champions, but in terms of players, is extremely exciting towards the top of the table here in the LPL. I, like, I'm loving watching jungle this year. It feels like such a... JDG going to play with Cher? Yeah, they normally play with Cher. I would assume they are. I mean, I think JDG is going to roll Weibo into a blunt. Weibo is pretty bad. I think Weibo could beat IG, though. Because I also think IG is fraudulent. So, we'll have to see. Like, I mean, the LPL playoff race is always fucking sick because of this reason, right? Like, you get to this point of the year and everyone can kind of beat everyone. So it's like OMG versus IG. I'm not even sure if IG is going to win that one tomorrow. If OMG wins that, then they're like pretty much locked into playoffs. Um, you have uh, Weibo playing against IG on Tuesday. That's a really big match. If TT beat FPX on Monday, then if Weibo lose versus IG, then they're out. If AL loses to top esports and tt wins and weibo loses tt could take that last dude tt could rob the last playoff spot 
We're seeing more teams start to warm up a bit. Is it perfect? No, a lot of our teams don't know how to do a dragon setup still. They don't know how to play through their early game through laning phase, but they're starting to warm up to it. And that's a good start, especially since playoffs always look so different from regular season. I'll take it for now. Yeah. I yeah, as you just locked playoffs with that yeah. win from uh, TT, yep. Because they have game score guaranteed all over Weibo. One team playing for the first Herald while the other team plays for the first couple of Drakes and kind of almost splitting the map. Yeah, the, the importance of the IG match is not even for like IG, right? It's for the other teams. I mean, I guess the, the question is who's going to lock up the sixth spot in LPL and not end up in this round, Robin, because... uh. First round is played between seven and ten, so whichever team gets the sixth spot is going to be chilling, bro. Like one of these teams gets to escape first round, which obviously that's super good if you're in LPL. This guy was so good this game. We said, hey, isn't it going to be an issue once he reaches like two, two and a half items? Is he going to be too tanky to one shot? Yes, he was. Up killing the entire enemy team. Jack Jungle has been a really big power pick in the LPL. I I'm gonna love seeing this be a contested pick coming into the playoff series as well. I'm really excited to see, you know, Tien versus Panavi versus Shun. AL, uh, game score so low. Yeah, that's that's the problem for AL, is that their game score is really bad. So if other teams catch up to seven and nine, they're pretty much doomed. Like the question for AL is is Weibo or TT gonna win one of their series? It's gonna be JDG versus Weibo, both top four at the World Championship. Weibo actually making it further than JDG, and I think JDG might have something to say about it after the break. All right, how long is the break? If you're not T1, what do you do in this situation? World champion or $10 million? I mean, unless you're already a millionaire, you should probably choose the $10 million. You should probably choose borderline generational wealth over personal accomplishment. Unless you can leverage that into generational wealth yourself. That's what I would think. 10 million sounds pretty good. Not bad. FPX and NIP secured for uh, top six. Um, yes, yes, both of them are secured for top six. Because even if other teams catch them at like ten and six, they have game score over them. Their game score is too good. Actually, no one else. Can, actually, teams can't catch them. The only team that could catch them is uh, IG. All the other teams can max be nine and seven. All right, let's see it, bro. JDG, probably the most underrated team. Um, Yeah, probably the most underrated team in the world right now, I would say. Like, everyone talks about JDG like they are just fucking horrible. I mean, they're literally 12 and two in the LPL, but people just talk about them like they're just complete dog shit. Like, damn, bro. This team, bro, what happened to them? Team's gonna be good as fuck.
back to the LPL. We're headed to our third and final series of the day. All right, last last series of the day. Weibo JDG. I'm down. Last year, this were, these were two of the most successful LPL teams. Obviously, JDG MSI champions. Weibo making it to world's finals against the Wolves. In my opinion, but a lot of people believed in them. Uh, I'm much joined by Nomera as we head towards this third series. And once again, Nomera, we got to talk about this race for playoffs. We do because um, despite the fact that Weibo were a world finalist team, they are almost on the brink of being eliminated from playoffs contention in the LPL. This team is one which is currently set at six and eight, very similar to Team Team. Dude, I, I fucking hate it. So I don't know if you saw the Jared thing. So people are worried about Jared, somebody who I used to duel with, Anibot, because he's been like running it down on stream. So he just randomly queued. I think he's lost like, let's see, tear graph. Okay, so in the last week, he's went from master, or in the last like few days, he's went from master 25 LP to Emerald 1, and he, it actually just looks like he's running it down every single game. Like every single game, his scores are just like terrible. He's like 13 deaths, 12 deaths. Um, people are worried that he's like depressed or like something's like wrong with him. Um, because it's just unnatural for a player who's been master plus peaking in challenger for like years to just play 40 games, average like 15 to 20 deaths a game and then lose like 500, 600 ELO. It just, it doesn't make much sense. It's actually kind of crazy. And then you see like advice from people uh, in the comments. It's like, it's like, I'm sure any bot will read this thread. And if he does, I just want to give him some advice here. It's time to move on, brother. I've been there. The climb is not exciting anymore. Games that are meant to be fun are actually frustrating, and you're running it down because you either don't care anymore or you're taking out your grief on others. I've been there. Uninstall the game and don't look back for several months. Then reevaluate if you want to continue or not. You'll appreciate it. It'll be hard to fill that void that League filled, but time heals all, so give it some time. Either you'll come back healthier or you'll move on and be healthy. Win-win scenario. Best of luck, whatever you do, mate. Did you also make a living playing? Like, this is so obvious. It's like, dude, he's a streamer. Like, the reason why streamers get like this is because they hate what they're doing and they feel fucking trapped. And it's really scary to, like, change your content. Like, you experience massive viewership drop whenever you try to change your content. Um, and it's just something that is really, like, scary because there's not actually a path forward. I think that that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand about streaming is that, like, when you're a streamer, like so for some people they enjoy the freedom and they think that that's a cool idea but for other people they like to have like a path of like okay i do this and then i get promoted i i like there's some path word there there's some path or some way that is like guaranteed forward it's like this is what i'm supposed to do to get better it's it's hard to under to like play with something as finicky as viewership like what makes me more popular on the internet it's not something that like people understand so the idea of like him just it's like, oh, bro, like, just quit the game for a couple months if it's not fun. It's like, do you realize this is his entire livelihood, right? Trajectory for the career? Yeah, I mean, just people like just having things that they feel like they can accomplish that will lead to a result that is, like, definite. It's like, if I do this work, I get this degree, something like that, you know? Like the reason why a lot of people get stuck streaming <clears throat> is that the whole idea of, like, be popular on the internet, like, whatever the fuck that means, is just a hard proposition. I mean, you can try a bunch of things. You can try, you know, you can try a bunch of, of you can have a bunch of different approaches to being more popular on the internet. Like, make some, some content. Okay, that didn't work. Try something else. Like, what are other people doing? Try to copy it try to innovate like what is your advantage over those other people like there i mean it is it's not like an impossible thing but i think for a lot of people they struggle with this like like being a content creator and being like okay i used to just stream league like somebody like anybody used to average like three thousand four thousand viewers i i did used to have those viewership now i'm still streaming league and now i'm getting like 100 viewers it's fucking hard bro mentally tough Okay, but shouldn't he have secured, like, a backup? He's always been a small streamer. I mean, he just wasn't a small streamer. Like, it's just not true. 
Like, people are just super delusional about, like, what viewership actually is. Like, he was somebody who, like, if you look at his Twitch tracker, he was somebody who was averaging thousands of viewers. Like, you realize that if somebody is averaging, like, over a thousand viewers, they are a big streamer. Like, if you were averaging, like, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 viewers, like, 3,000 viewers, like, you are a big streamer. But it's like... Things started going down, bro. Like then, okay, there's a spike here. Like maybe like Annie got buffed or something, or he was like in Challenger for a bit, like hitting maxes of seven, eight thousand. You know, it's like it's hard to like experience this, bro. This is something hard to deal with. People are just like really delusional about like what viewership is. Like I, I even see it like a lot in my chat. Like what I've like. 2,000 viewers on Twitch and then on YouTube, I don't know what I have. Like, now that I'm multi-streaming, I get less viewers on Twitch, but it's fine. It's like, probably more viewers overall. But, um, let's say right now I have, I, I don't know, I haven't even checked uh, YouTube and we're, we're out of game, but I have like 1.5k. Let's say I have like 4,000 viewers or something. People will come into my chat and be like, holy shit, you're such a dead streamer. You should just fucking quit everything. Like, like holy fuck, like what happened? Like, people will freak the fuck out when they see like only 4,000 viewers or something. But like that is actually like a substantial amount. <laughs> that is that is like way more than comfortable. I mean, if you can average four thousand, like let me tell you, if you have a job and you are not like making, if you're not like a fucking doctor or a lawyer or some shit, if you have four thousand viewers average and you are trying to just maximize money, maybe you just don't think you'd enjoy streaming. Like you will make more money averaging four thousand viewers if you have it consistently than you will in like a ton of different professions, like ninety nine percent of professions. I know it's not the same roster. I know that there's been changes compared to last year, but you've still got three big pieces of that puzzle from the previous year. You still hope that Weibo could show up in a big series like this. I think one similarity uh, between this, um, because of these, uh, you know, the remaining members on the roster as well, is there is always the fallback for Weibo. But yeah, I mean. It could be tough, bro. It could be tough for uh for Eddie, but I hope he's all good. Because Light has been really putting on the backpack time and time again. Problem is, he's against Ruler, who can do exactly the same. And it feels like if you just try and do an arms race, I feel like JDG win on that front. I think the problem is for Weibo is that last year, that was a fallback option. Now it feels like it is the only option for them. You have some moments where... Why average 4,000 viewers to make money when you can just hit one 4,000 odds parlay with no stress? This is not consistent. And more True. Than not, he's actually being a detriment to the team with how he's uh, positioned. Bro, OG like, League bets, you'd be proud of the fucking grind recently. I've been on the fucking come up. Also, I got a little, I got some, some action today, bro. I put 500 at 3.64 odds on Mad Lions win versus Heretics parlayed with Team Liquid. Uh, win versus 100 Thieves. 500 to win 1,814, bro. Let's see. But perhaps that'll be. Oh no, the cup's leaking. <laughs> oh no. He just wants a cup of a coffee. Sippy cup. <laughs> Nightmare. Nightmare. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what they can do with the jungle. I mean, show how, like you say, I was excited that he was getting onto a bigger roster. ZDZ has had a couple of decent splits over the last couple of years deal who lose it's not my fault blame apa okay true you don't think quid can feast on apa i think i think quid can feast on apa i think the other parts of 100 thieves is like what i'm uh what i'm worried about i think 100 thieves balling is legit just like bad i think yeon core jj unironically run them and impact is just like super stable top and i feel like TL can probably just like out macro and have better prep. It seems like that type of stuff actually matters a lot more when you're playing series. All right. JDG Weibo. Big series. Really important. I mean, obviously JDG is big favorites, but if Weibo win this series or, or either of their two series, they probably are going to end up making playoffs. So Weibo really would love a win here. Yeah, Xiaohu on his Talia. It's his best champ. Been his best champ uh, recently, in my opinion. I mean, 
Yeah, nothing else that he's played has actually looked that great, if I'm being honest. It's also Yigao's best champ as well, so taking the Talia away is pretty big. Question is, what does Yigao play? Karma's banned, Nico's banned. I mean, he could play Huey. It doesn't really sound like a Yigao champion, but he could play Huey. He could also just play Orianna. Ari? Okay, Ari. I like Ari. No, Ari's good. Ari's better for Yigao than those other picks I mentioned. Makes sense. Maybe you're right here because the Talia will be roaming bot side. The Ari can also Yeah, we just assume this is going to be... I guess it would, Milio would be considered prio over Nami here when you're playing versus Renata. But both can work. Generally, like, people like Milio, um, ulti to counter Renata ulti. I think we're going to get a lot of jungle bans aimed at stopping impacts towards the bot side of the map in our second round. Okay, they end up going Nami. Okay. Um, so the question is, does JDG ban Vi here? JDG should ban Vi, but there's a chance that they leave up Vi and then Kanavi like counterpicks it with one of the champions he really likes playing like Wukong. But Vi would be very good for Weibo's comp. Vi Talia into two um, mobile carries in Ari and Ballista. It's pretty nice. Talia is so broke. I agree. I think Talia is really broken. ZDZ still a Kasante one trick pony? Uh, I mean, he just plays everything. He just doesn't play anything super well. <laughs> like, gotta plays everything, but the problem with, with ZDZ is, is he's just like a weaker version of the all a bin breathe type of players where his best champions are probably Jax Camille and those champions are just not good right now and that his weak siding is not good either I mean the um Jax ban makes me think they're just gonna pick Zid on for it's generally what that means but I feel like JDG should just ban Vi you really care about Zid on four like I mean I like why did Weibo ban Vi I mean it just doesn't make sense like I feel like Vi is better for Weibo than it is for JDG. I mean, Vi should be the high prio, but whatever, man. It doesn't make sense. So I guess it's like Xin Zhao banned now for JDG. Or they can leave it up and they can play like Volibear into it. They can play Volibear or Wukong into it. So it's going to be Zin on four, like 100% here, right? You could also play um, Lee Sin for Kanavi. I guess he has options. So, because you know the Zin is coming. All right, what do you want, Kanavi? And then I guess Sheer will just play Kasante here. Cheers, Kasante has been really good. I mean, unless he wants to get some experience on something else, maybe he could go like Renekton or something. I'd be down for Lee Sin Kasante though. Very JDG style cop. All right, Kasante. Does ZDZ go Udir or does he go Renekton? I mean, I think Renekton's probably better in this type of game. The thing about Udir is it's like kind of hard to play into like Kalista, Ari, Lee Sin. It's just very hard to get on people. I prefer Sheer over Flandre. I mean, I thought Flandre was fine, but I think Sheer's been playing really well, so. Yeah, I, I think Flandre is like games where um, people like overreacted by the community. Like, Kanavi griefed Flandre a lot. Like, Fl like Kanavi was really griefing Flandre quite a bit in their series or in the games that they played. So, the idea of like it being. All Flaudre's fault that he was behind, it's kind of cope. Three game as well. 
Like, it's weird, right? Because Shiro started playing, and then Kanavi just stopped griefing top lane. It was probably just an inside job. You think this will be a bloody game? I think it should be bloody, yeah. So every single game counts for this roster. On the other side. Like this, this looks like it should be a bloody game. I mean, everyone wants to be fighting. Like there's literally action possible in all three lanes. And Uder versus Darius game to spare. Yeah, but that was like the only game where Shira entered. Besides for that, he's been mega stable. And he played like in... Like games that mattered a lot more. Like him getting dicked once by Ultra Prime. Doesn't really matter. I mean, he played well versus top esports. Like he's been solid as fuck. I just want to shout out the the uh, ED, uh, I think it's the EDG fan in the crowd there with a Chi Chu <laughs> hat. Valorant player, absolute legend. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, just on the topic of the seedings there, the absolute game of chicken. Thirty five minutes on ads yeah, should be fun. How long am I in Germany for? I am here for another three or four weeks. Oh no, they're letting Yagao get the ward, so he has XP advantage okay. in so mid lane. Exactly. So now what this means is that you can hit level two after I live in three and a half weeks. In the first place, instead of just the second one. That's well. crazy that I've already uh, been here. Yahoo. We'll see if he gets a good trade on the way back. Over two weeks, bro. Feels like we just got here, kinda. Wins level one trades against a lot of mage clans. You run at them with like auto W auto. You get stuff like electrocute trade for, for free. So the Yago is going to see Shahu running around this corner. It's going to just tank the Q damage. I mean, I feel like you should have just walk forward and um, use your electrocute at this point. It's a free trade. Not great from Yago. At least he's going to get back to it. But this is... Three Qs in a row with Shahu's gotten at level one. This flips the matchup now. There's two Scorches as well. This Ari's not going to be playing with the same amount of HP. Really well played by Shahu. I'm not sure if you can win the trade even if you W and go forwards, right? Because Talia just keeps on queuing you. Oh, hey, <laughs> making them walk so the long way here. It's just because Electric. That's depressing. Is so nasty. Yeah, the problem no, is. I, I get the initial trade, but then after that, right? Plan on checking out neighboring cities or countries? No. I mean, I'll probably come back to Europe at some point. Do that, but yeah. Well, see what happens now with the XP advantage. Mainly, I'm just gonna be streaming here. Very early on, um, really, really nasty. Of course, Ari had a lot of buffs to her scaling HP as it comes through, it makes it more tanky in mid game. Doesn't help you right now, though. And you see that Shahu gets a um, really nasty trade again, just continuing to shove this in. He's a player which we need to see an improvement out of, we need to see some more consistency out of. That's been the real problem for Weibo. A start like that at least put things on rails. A little easier, so yeah, Dude, Talia laning looks so brain dead, bro. Every time I watch Talia laning, they just queue the wave over and over again. That's it. And they just don't interact with the enemy champion. Watching Knight play it, he just queues every single wave, and then you just throw your fucking mini rocks afterwards. The boulder or whatever. And it's just, it looks so brain dead and boring. Kind of hoping to join the big leagues on this roster it's been tough on Weibo so far this year now one of the biggest tests he's gonna have all year long is this matchup with Kanavi absolutely Kanavi definitely up there as one of the best junglers in the LPL I, I wish I could comprehensively say best jungler in the LPL right now but every so often he has a game which makes me wonder if he's connected to his team when he's on his game I don't think there's a doubt Kanavi has been absolutely insane even with the likes of you know, Shun and Milky Way playing around as well it's very tight competition, and I think that's fantastic from a viewer perspective and from us as fans of the and casters of the region as well. Really need to see him get onto the board, though. It can be quite hard playing into stuff like Talia. Disgusting Lee Sin skin. Absolutely hate it. In the latest stages of the game. So far, Yagao just sw swept over here. Even stop fairly quiet stuff. Yagao moves up to the top side to see if that crab They know that, um... They know that Zin most likely based if he's not on crab at that timing. So both junglers are walking to this crab. Could end up being a scrap. I think 2v2 right now probably favors Weibo. Now he's going top. ZDC is no flash. Or no E, I mean. Right now he has flash. No E. Oh, he hits those just like that. All right, he just hits those. Uh, is this gonna work? I looked a little sus, to be honest. Shear just hits those, bro. Okay. 
Doesn't want to lose too much of the experience though. Gonna TP back top. And once again, Kanabi Sleeson gets into the game. Vision Plant is gonna spot that. Kanabi didn't fly over the wall. What this means is that Shao Hao can instead just go towards the first rub. Oh, that hits? Bro, that charm was fucking crazy. What? I want to credit Sheer here for going for a really aggressive trade with ZDZ just before Kanavi's coming into the lane. So the slice and dice was on cooldown. Really, really nice setup from Sheer. Again, another game where we see Sheer really performing in the top side. Do you have a preference which team makes playoffs? Uh, not really. I mean, I don't really want Weibo to make playoffs, if I'm being honest. I think AL could be more interesting. I feel like Weibo is just so disappointing. Sadly, it doesn't work out for him. ZDZ, with a lot of eyes on him in a quite critical manner, goes down for first blood. Just aggressive. Nice. Just the Callista W auto attack with missing. Callista that auto attack did like 150 oh, damage. Uh, nice. Just about to point that out. It's the Hail of Blades, it's the Dirk first. It means that you don't have to play in the range of Talia's minefield. You saw this first, um, as far as I'm aware, from Haze on Gen G. That's fun because, of course, JDG's coach now is the old Gen G coach of Marfa. The, the coaches of Marfa versus Dany in this matchup, too. Heck, they've got a lot of, lot of history between themselves and various LCK teams and about the place, too. But Ruler going towards this Lethality Callista build means that he doesn't have to play the more difficult style of Callista and say, Well, I have to play. Bring Tiger, though. Yeah, I mean, I just. It's like I'd always rather see the team that's kind of overperforming, but are worse on paper make playoffs over a team that's underperforming that's supposed to be really good this, that pretty much goes for like every region that's how i yeah that's just what i'd rather see it's a huge amount of burst and can unexpectedly kill someone like an army or illusion who are not that tanky yeah you really can one shot with this build honestly and also even outside of just the talia matchup uh, against something like a you need scout so aggressively it does i'll take your gal over scout like in, in most teams the only time I would take like scout over your gal is if I was like replacing somebody who the whole like I the guaranteed the whole team was already functional, right? So if I was like replacing like I mean I I think that these would still be downgrades just for the record because people are gonna freak out. But like if I if I was replacing Chovy on Genji, then I would take like scout over your gal probably because you just want like somebody who's like a better laner and like everything else is probably gonna be functioning. Auto attacker to work with really it, it can help a little bit. But, but if I'm playing on any team that has any deficiencies in like macro, like if I was replacing Showmaker on D plus, I'm taking your gal any day, which is also why it works very well with the on hit Callista. But still, I think that the actual Callista in isolation is very, very big for this game, and also means that um, it's just much harder for Weibo, as you said, to kind of close that distance and play the shorter trade to Lucian Jashing towards, as you can see. Light, who is a very important player for Weibo, is getting kind of manhandled in the laning phase. It certainly is. Bit of a tough one here. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's one of those positions where, like, you know, Lucian, not necessarily known for his strong first couple of levels. It's once you get, like, three onwards that you start to get strong. Oh my five. god, the, the Q with the Dirk, bro. Holy shit. Sheer live this? Into the top side once again. Sheer. Oh my god, he's just getting killed. Oh no. I feel like Sheer could have W'd earlier and potentially killed. Gorgeous play. And the crowd roars to life behind it as well. They enjoyed that one. Sheer still no teleport. Wave crashing in towards top side and shouting. They lose a lot of gold for this. So he could have potentially stopped him from. Kind of sucks to be dove on this wave. Sheer getting away from. Kind of like one versus two and a half with the threat of Shahu on top side. Very, very valuable. Problem is, still behind in the individual and la lane matchup, which means that ZDZ um, potentially able to keep pushing this tower with the grubs active. If you start seeing lower views on your YouTube videos since you started streaming on YouTube, you need to start doing YouTube streams on a different account. Thanks for the advice, bro. That was a, a kind of dicey flash, I'm not gonna lie, from uh, But he does get away with it. That's all that matters at the end of the day. But no, I wouldn't do that. You need to really wait until mid game before you can play very, very aggressive and on the edge versus the Ari and the Lee Sin because once that E is down, you don't have an extra ability to stop people just flying in with dashes at you. That E, very, very valuable tool. So sadly for him, loses that flash for free. Maybe a return gank angle. Starting to have uh, the malignants up just yet from Yagao to have very, very low spirit rush cooldown. 
best spot of roaming up towards mid lane as well. It's going to be uh, Rob's taken in the second round by JDG. At least Let me nine. mess it all up. Way, but, oh, yeah, I mean, I think it's really sketchy anyway. Out, caught out here, has to flash away. Spirit Rush on cooldown. I think get two and they're running. That even real? I mean, I think that that's outdated from what I've, from what I understand about YouTube. Is that ever since they made the live tab, it's fine to uh, stream on YouTube? Because you used to count your YouTube as a like as a video, your YouTube stream as a video. So if like your YouTube stream got, I don't know, like so like I think my YouTube streams normally if I do like a longer one will get like. 25 30,000 views and like if the channel average for a video is like 50 or 60,000 views it will fuck you in the algorithm but i think they changed it i mean i don't think it should like theoretically it shouldn't punish you to stream right like on their platform zdz is super far ahead because of the uh dive the pressure All right, Drake up. I just, uh, I was having a look at the Drake wide. No flash on both mid laners. It's easier for JDG to abuse this, though, than it is for um, Weibo to abuse it. So let's see. Kanavi gets like a kick or something onto Xiaohu. They're fighting. They're fighting in Bot River. Bro, let me see the Bot River fight. I see them getting chunked. Ruler has to move back to his team to group. I mean, this looks really hard. JDG have to give. Damn. TP available where Sheer doesn't. I think maybe JDG just respecting that TP advantage. And, uh, I think that makes a lot of sense. If you're going in a single I I think fight, it kind of funny. You always you always crap on Genji, yet their sponsor with an E is Puma, and you always wear it. Odd. Nice, bro. Wait, I literally like perma compliment Genji. What? When do I perma shit on Genji? I don't even know, bro. I don't even know where people get their information anymore. I'm always using Genji to flame T1. Certainly is big old CS lead there. It's kind of match on the bottom side, right? So fairly even in this one. It's a good start for Weibo. When you you got to remember the matchup that we're looking at here. JDG are a heavy, heavy favorite coming into this one. JDG generally though haven't exactly been the most aggressive early game team. A little bit slower than some of our other top teams in the LPL. Quite happy to play things out and and force things a little bit later on. This Renekton is huge, bro. Renekton is kind of Thanos right now. Trying to stack Drake You're trying to steal a plate. He's got two grubs. Gets one. Base here. Does he have Iceborne yet? You know what's so fucked up is you can go full armor on Kasante and then be swapped into a lane versus Mage and then you just solo kill the Mage. If the Mage is not Ari. Like you still, you just hard win even with these items. I think Weibo is actually pretty good spot here, all things considered. I feel like JDG need to make something happen. Okay, Ruler takes the blue buff. It's actually pretty nice when you're playing like the poke Callista with Q Max and Lethality. Oh my god, that Q is nasty from Ruler. Jesus. I mean, they do have a Nami, so enemy team is sustaining. Yeah, honestly, Lethality Callista is kind of scary. Anyone who's played a lot of Earth will know about the damage yes. this champion can do. Uh, you don't. Oh, you, historically, we've not necessarily seen it that much in competitive, but it does feel like Lethality is just in such a strong position right yeah, now. Yeah, they pulled everyone here. You got walked up mid. God, it's disgusting. It's a go back bot here. Cue the wave or no? Also, the one thing I will say, not going to do it to Ruler. But Lethality especially, the play where you stack up all your rends on Grump, then yeah. Q through the Grump and one-shot someone. Ugh. 
It's disgusting. It's one of my favorite plays. I, I, cause I've, I know a couple of people who are like dedicated Callista mains and they've been looking for like the, the perfect one shot. It's like the holy grail of Callista <laughs> plays. Uh, some of them have been still been waiting for that moment on that one. And uh, I've yet to see it in pro play. We'd love to see that at some point. Maybe we'll see it in this game. Uh, Sheer hasn't got to base yet. He's been on the map for a long time. Base for Iceborne Gauntlet. Probably have to give top turret though. Drake in one minute. Giving top turret for it yes. now. There's uh, Light actually going for a bit of lethality on his second item as well. Perhaps feeling like he's to match that upfront damage. I think he went snipe. I think he went. Uh, sorry, the good bait. Of CDC, being really good bait from Kanavi. Trade, but um, with his amount of CDR, he probably won't have it for Drake. Be huge. In the bottom side, but Wonder if Wave will just give this. Question. The recall. If it's committed, it could be Xiaohao in trouble instead. Crisp is moving over. He's Xiao finished the turn here. Xiaohao? And what is Xiaohao doing here? Alright, I mean, Kanavi no kick now. Renekton has no ult. Still should be advantage Weibo for the Drake. But I don't think that... Uh, or sorry, uh, JDG for the Drake. But I don't think Weibo cares that much about the Drake. Like, it's a second Drake and it's a Chemtech. There's no reason they need to fight it, to be honest. Well, so JDG, we've known this from them. They don't always play the game fast. In fact, quite far from it. It feels like it's more of a the once in a blue moon. They pull out a massive destructive early game. They did that versus Top Esports a couple of times, so that was typically through um, missing Rakan and Kanavi's Lee Sims. Those kind of combos have worked out very, very well. Harold though, being pushed into mid. This could potentially be a game kind of accelerating play for JDG, depending on whether they can find it. Harold charging in. Just gonna be half they use this to just get position in the river I mean it looks like it looks like they're giving looks like they're giving they're just gonna play for top who's gonna TP thing is you got to be careful if you TP away here because if you TP away there's a chance your team gets engaged on are they just giving top tier two oh no flash on Jaha clean clean honestly really clean and they go into light. Light has cleanse. They're going for ZDZ. Oh, he's just accepting death or what? He's just accepting death, I guess. I don't think he's going to get away with the play. Sheer pushes him against the wall. Everybody flies in for a bit of action. Yeah, that looked playable. So he picks up a kill, two assists. Yeah, he just accepted death. I mean, ZDZ is really strong for the next fight, though. He did get a full tier two. He's got Sterex, Black Cleaver. Pretty good flash from missing. I mean, they just knew that Jaha had no flash from when Lee Sin flashed on him. So they just forced really hard with it here. I mean, if Weibo just don't die here, they're getting top tier two. Like, it could end up in a pretty good position, but they griefed it. Like that when Shao had no flash, couldn't get away from the uh, the handshake. Great handshake from missing. Great opportunity found. Renekton pick didn't help at all. The Renekton pick is fine though. And, uh, what JDG lack in he he played Shirex's okay in the game. Just kind of like team decisions. They're just getting out macroed by JDG. And this happens to a lot of teams in LPL. Yeah, I guess discipline, yeah. They, I mean, the game is still pretty right, even. Right, it's not like Weibo can't fight or anything. They probably could test third Drake. Set themselves up in a good position. It's not a huge lead, but it is a lead. And it's a lead while, you know, being down turrets, which means that effectively, if they can get to those turrets, money in the bag, nice for them. It means that they can kind of get that standing gold. Weibo, they don't have that same ability to kind of trade tower for tower in this uh, same kind of ease. It can sometimes be one of those big up late game kind of concerns between number of these teams second item starting to come through on the edge Did a clean 2-0 that's kind of just nice and I mean, that's what the expected result is the thing about Weibo is they're really bad around objectives like JDG's biggest strength is Weibo's biggest weakness so it's a really hard matchup I would say for Weibo I think that just in general in LPL if your team is like not really solid macro wise your worst matchup will be JDG like a team like WE that has actually pretty decent macro could probably potentially like upset JDG. But if you are not a team that like understands these concepts and they're they're not and you're not good around objectives, 
I was gonna say, it's like almost impossible to beat JDG. You just have to stomp them so unrealistically hard early game to actually like win win the game. Whereas like top esports and BLG, they're way more flippy. So if you're like a scrappy team that's like not super good, okay. Save missing. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're a team that just wants to fight, like maybe you wake up on the, like you just wake up, you have your best day ever, like IG did versus BLG, and you can like outscrap them. Looking to fight? Oh. They pull ZDZ. Gal is here, but he's on a ward. Break in one minute. Dude, is this lethality Callista actually good? I don't know, bro. Like, so, like when I'm seeing the spears, it looks nice. Like, it looks like it's annoying for the enemy. But then you just have Lethality Callista later on. I mean, item-wise, this is completely even fight in my mind. I don't see, like, any big advantage for JDG. I think it will just come down to whoever outplays. Also, like, Kanavi has no flash for this fight. Okay, they're just trying to burn ZDZ's ult here. I think Weibo might even have the advantage. Why well, Tali is so strong in a fight like this. But ZDZ, like, the problem that I have with ZDZ is he normally just runs it down in fights. Like, he has, like, very um, bad team fight vision compared to players like 369 or, like, Sheer, for example. Seems like he has way better understanding of, like, how to play around his team than ZDZ does. ZDZ normally just sends it every fight. He's, like, their standard guy who just runs it down and then says no follow-up. Yeah, see, ZDZ is doing it right now. He's, he's no follow-uping right now. <laughs> See, like, that's what I'm saying. He does that literally every fight, though. Oh, Yagao was looking for Jiao Hu. Didn't get him. Jiao Hu was no flash, so I, I respect the play from, from Yagao. CDZ managed to get into the back line, surrounded by three people in melee range. You normally think, heck, that's how Renekton wins fights, but he just can't close down the targets. Ruler, with that urge of night, so hard to get through to him. He actually just does that unironically every fight. Ooh, no flash on Kanavi. Not fighting it. Okay, they're running. Yagao no flash. Yagao is just dead here, by the way. I think. Yeah, Yagao is just dead. Jiao's dead. Seemed like Weibo didn't know if they wanted to continue committing or not. No, we're not old, but Ruler had subs. I don't know. I think it could have been, could have been close. They could have committed harder. Oh, tax we don't is so fucking cancer. Yeah, I mean it looks pretty hard to play. Alright, ZDZ full rage gets into the backlight. Also, like his target selection here is bad. Like he should have just went on Ari. But he just like stuns the Lee Sin and then Lee Sin just W's out. Like if he go if he stuns Ari there and one shots Ari and trades his life, maybe they can win. It's close for me, Gal. I don't. I don't hate the attempt. Like that guy is no flash. If you hit it, he's just dead. We'll take it. Grinding league yourself. I'm not like grinding like I was. I mean, to be honest, EU and NA just feel like the same thing all over again. Like I just did a challenger grind. I don't have it in me to do another one while co-streaming like three regions and in, in their peak. But I'm, I'm like playing, you know. I'm, I'm playing. I'm just doing. I'm just grinding slowly. Our count right now is this. Currently, 
playing on this account. Super slow grind though. Like I'm like not putting in that many games a day. Yeah, I've been here like what 15 days and I've only played 35 games. It's like not that much. He's 50-50 on his Ari so far, wins and losses. But I feel like on average he's been a pretty solid Ari so far this split. It felt like this was one of the picks that. Oh, you got missed. Oh, not again. The rocks come out as well to stop any follow-up. Shahu. Keep himself alive. Dodge it's pretty hard to job. kill there unless Leeson's able to connect. When it comes to, like, Ari play from because uh, I guess it, he still had his uh, Seraphs, but yeah. I care more about how the positions which Ari plays put themselves into rather than trying to land like the 50 50 charms and stuff like that. Now, there are egregious points like this where it's like, okay, you dashed into Valet and you missed your charm anyway. But this thing is ulted. Go going to Crisp. Whoa, where is Crisp flashing to? Navi is dead. Okay. Got a kind of a banger. One for one. Oh, that was actually close. If Xiao hits that, it's game over. But I don't even feel like JDG have like any damage, really. Their damage does not look high here. So quick on the teleports. W coming out from Sheer, his frontline potential is severely diminished after that thing goes down, but it does he make it pretty much unkillable for a little while. Yeah, so still Zolt. They walk away, trying to control this midwave. Again, very even on gold. They have yeah, one for one. Gold point that's important for them. It looks like they're going to be able to walk into the river as opposed to Weibo after this point. T1 would be like 1k games in. Yeah, but T1 doesn't co-stream, right? So he's just doing more gameplay. Actually, how is T1 doing on, um, on NA? Is he in his tilt phase still? Because I thought I saw him lose like 700 LP. Oh, nice. T1, okay, good, yes. Nice. He went from 900 LP to 51 LP master. This feels like a bit of a level up from Weibo for me. Like after their That's just the T1 way, bro. That is the T1 way. Holy fuck. Kind of match a lot of the pressure that JDG have been putting on. It does feel like a good showing from Weibo so far. Like regardless of the result, this has been a decent early game. Yes, they are behind in kills they're slightly behind in gold yes soul point is spawning in 30 seconds and that could be a decider but they have been going toe to toe with jdg and i take that as positive still i mean jdg doesn't have like an item advantage in this fight like they don't have like a guaranteed winner or anything like that oh kanavi got caught big oh he doesn't die though I feel like Yagao should not have ulted there, though. Uh, Weibo will get this. Maybe JDG have to try to leverage Baron. Weibo should just get this now. Are they just going to start it right now? Are they just going to do it? Okay. Enemy team knows. Jaho is still finishing Drake. I mean, they get it. Uh, they can get here in time. JDG need to leave. JDG just need to leave here. Pretty big. Any fruit looks balanced, yeah. I mean, they just don't have damage to do Baron. I don't know, like, this Callista build also just does way less damage to Baron than, um, than, like, a Bork build. Using that kind of just ability to hide around the corner as the Talia look for that, shove out a fog of war, try and get something good, and Weibo will get themselves a turret bomb here as well. Despite the fact that they only have two kills in this game so far, they're very much competing in terms of gold, and they're competing very much in terms of map pressure. Those yeah, not sure if I like it, bro, not sure. Helping them uh, in terms of getting JDG into areas of the map, and allowing themselves a bit more breathing room on the map. Feels like Kanabi is really struggling to impact these, these later fights. It's in so hard to play against things like the Talia, the Nami. As you said before, that wave coming out, the rocks coming out from Talia as well. Does such a good job of uh, diminishing what's available for the JDG uh, dashing carries, which turns out is all of them. Um, <laughs> tough fights for JDG, and it does feel like Wavo's composition. We talked about the scaling aspect of it. Sha, who's almost on three items? You've got three items for life. Yeah, I mean, it feels like like Wavo is actually in pretty good position this game. Carries are just going to get to a point where they out damage everyone on JDG. Yeah, if Kanabi was dead, that was a Nash, unlucky. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, they don't want to Nash in a way that... And w w where they end up giving Drake there as well. So maybe if they kill Kanabi, they just go Drake and then set up Nash. I think if you go straight Nash there, there's a chance that JDG just fucks with you, delays your recalls, and then you end up losing Drake. Then you've, like, traded Soul for Nash. And I feel like this Soul is actually... 
Yeah, I mean, it's it, it's not nothing, bro. Dragon up right now. Baron's still, still around. Both these teams fighting very heavily over mid lane, partly because that's where these AD carries. Um, they're kind of like favored. They love to be in mid lane and go over into different sides of the river. Okay. Also because JDG are afraid Let me get this mid turn down. I mean, this mid turn has been a pretty big point of contention. Starting bear, I mean, ZDZ is level 16 with Sterex and Shojin. He should be really strong here. Does Ruler just sell all of his items of Fire Page Blade? Um, that's a really good point. The problem is you don't have any items that transfer between. I mean, who does who does um Baron well in this comp from JDG? That's like the question that I have. Like, I'm down for you to go Lethality Callista, but I feel like you want to go Lethality Callista if you have something that also does, like, consistent damage. But, like, when you have Ari plus Lethality Callista plus Elisa and plus a Cassante, it just makes your comp look low damage. I know that was part of a joke, but actually, I feel like there yeah, is a, no, there's I, a world where it would be quite valuable. It, it was, it's one of those jokes where I don't think he's going to do it, but I also feel like we've got to the point where the Lethality Callista... Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Oh, they're flanking. Have much more impact on oh, ZZ is looking to flank, maybe. We'll have to see. I've been wrong before, and this is ruler we're talking about. He always seems to find a way. He's afraid of flanking. Yeah, he does. Uh, we get ourselves to a point now where... What's that 500 second? Oh, it's 500 first strike gold from light. It's like, what's the 500? Uh, He's getting, getting an extra 500 gold from first strike. That will be really Do you know, I see a lot of those pop-ups on the side, and when I when it's when it's like Smolder or Senna, I'm like, okay, yeah, I know what this is. It's quite obvious what they are. Sometimes it's like... Cassante pops up with something 200 I think of share I think he's pretty good what, what? is it like the player he's been really good is it a milestone for the player <laughs> but it's not like Weibo's played a bad game like they've honestly played pretty well yeah maybe one of their better games for sure like a heart seal and then it obviously shows you on the tab so it's a little bit different in that regards um yeah yeah the game is really slowed down now though um, I think again JDG so afraid to play the game wide because there's a Talia in the game strong to one shot people and then to also teleport back to the other side of the map so you can't even cross map against it you kind of just have to play how do the british season. say now, finally, after the zdz's season, name zdz um they actually just died the one i don't know bro probably was, um, how's eus challenger 900 lp like no idea man they just have a lot of players i guess I wonder now that the vision or maybe it's just that's why eu is so good this shows how strong the region is Xiaohu, a player that's known for his prowess in side laning, understanding how to play that side lane out, proving that when he went top lane for a split, was basically the best yes. player in the league as a top laner. Um, okay, we got a scrap. As we're going in, Sheer on the front line, looking for Xiaohu here. Still looks hard for JDG. Canavi did take a huge chunk right as Dragon is about to spawn. I mean, they need Sheer to walk forward, but like, the thing is, it's... I don't know. His team can't really back him up that well. If he does walk forward, it's not like him taking damage will allow his team to like do much. Complete flip would be good for JDG. They're down for a flip. We're not old pretty early. Yagao ends up getting, or sorry, uh, Jahu ends up getting the Drake. Oh, Sheer actually Q3'd onto Light. Oh, big. Sheer just dead. They're trying to go into Zhao Hu. Okay, missing is dead. Looks tough. It's really hard. Can they do Baron now? Can they do Baron? Sheer has TP. Probably not. A lot of flashes used here. Bro, this has been, uh... <laughs> this has been just like a bunch of action, but not many people are dying in the action. It hasn't led to a seen a lot of team fights. We've seen like three or four team fights, really and there's only 10 deaths. It's crazy. People are just playing on the edge. <laughs> oh, God, it's going to be another slow game here, Joe, because I don't see this being a game breaking fight. It's just one which stops JDD from getting soul and trying to grind out the game in their own way. Oh, it's so tense in this game. It's so incredibly tense, but Waymo holding their nerve. Light able to dash forward and do so much damage without much punishment in return. Let's take another look. I want to see, because Xiaohu was the one that got this Drake in the end. Let's have a look. He was just hitting with the rocks. He gets Berserk, but yeah, I mean, it just the smite and the rend is not at the right timing, so it just goes down to the next Q that was still firing through from Xiaohu, despite the fact that he was CC. And then, of course, we see Shir. Really good W from Xiaohu here. Ends up killing Shir. It's just really hard to do that.
out the ranges they're playing at. Shahu. Surprised that missing didn't die there, to be honest. He's very hard to get on top of. He's always in range to punish with a shot. That was a huge oh, MVP Gal, fight for Shahu. Gets the dragon, gets the knockback on Sheer as well. Oh, charm onto ZDZ. Decent damage. No GA on that guy yet. Sheer on the bottom side of the play, potentially trying to deny Shao, who who's looking for a wall angle, but instead we'll find chickens. <laughs> this Talia makes the game so hard, no? Like, imagine if Weibo just didn't have Talia. The game would be like 15 times e easier for JDG. I swear, this champion is so fucking broken, bro. This champion is so broken. Two birds, one stone. Yeah, there we go. Eight chickens, four rocks. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's so, the you know, that is, that's the new, that is the new LPL saying. Eight chickens, four rocks. Incredible. The one. Um, Kanavi, once again, looking forward. Red buff for full Weibo. Are they start? Okay, they're starting it here. They're seen, though. Yugao's trying to position, trying to get a charm on priority target as they walk in. Maybe he can hit light. Okay. Really good from light here. Gets Yugao's ult. Oh, you got dash into the rocks. He's dead. Pretty bad. It's pretty bad for uh, JDG. It looks pretty hard. Oh, he got onto ruler. Do they go mid? Is it just over? Dude, Weibo, holy fuck. I think with the waves that they have and the, well, I mean, the, even with the waves on their own side. Of the yeah, I mean, it looks like they can. Oh, uh, no, they're going Baron. They're going Baron. The they're like, can we, can we end? Uh, it's going to be scary. Might as well just fucking have one person go. Everyone else goes Baron. I don't know. It feels like a very hard game for JDG to play. Like the more that I'm looking at it, this Talia just counters their whole team, I think. Like the Talia is just so fucking broken here, no? Yeah, and I mean, the thing is, like, Yigao has to ult here, and without ult, they can never win the fight. Like, he got hit by one rock here. I mean, I don't know, bro. I think it's such a hard game to play. I think it's such a hard game to play. The more I look at it, the more I think it's, like, really, really difficult. Have we mentioned this disgusting Lucian build yet? What does he have? What did he do though? So disgusting. I'm not really gonna credit him with the Yagao kill. I feel like that was Yagao that got Yagao killed. I mean, I guess the collector is not great. Everything else is pretty standard though. Essentially, in the final parts of the fight, in the previous dragon fight as well, the flick back onto Sheer actually took that dragon in that last one. But we're gonna have another dragon fight coming up in 35 seconds here. We are very much in. I feel like JDG can't like win a fight though. Like they have to get a pick somehow. They have to just try to camp a bush and get a pick. I think it's the only way. Will they be able to find themselves an angle onto one of these carries? Zonia's on Shahu, Seraph's on Shahu. Nasty stuff. And the problem is, Ruler is not doing consistent damage. He's got to wait for his Q cooldowns. It's not really a late game. And you get six adds into nine adds into eight adds back to back. I mean, you probably didn't. I don't think that was possible. Or like Twitch just served you a bunch of like ten second ad or five second adds. Gonna be a soul dragon on the table. You probably didn't get like 20 something ads back to back. Doesn't seem possible. It looks like JDG's just gonna lose the game here. I don't know how they can win this. Oh, Yagao? Oh, big Yagao? Holy, wait, 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 hold on. They got Drake? Dead? Wait, Yagao is dead too? Oh my god. Zhao who ended up living there, bro. What? How long for Barrett? I mean, in the end? Dude, there's no way. Zhao who ended up living there, bro. Yagao did so much work. That's so fucking sad, actually. Yeah, it's over. It's over, I think. I think it's over. He's a large cannon. I don't think he can defend this one. His way both try and push it forward. 25 seconds on the reset. Nah, nah, nah. There's no way. No way they can hold this. I don't think. Yeah, Rulers is dead. GG. Damn. Maybe the best game that Weibo's played all split. Maybe the best game they played all split.
I mean, their comp was was good. Like, they definitely had a comp advantage here. But it was still a really well-played game, I think. Some very tough opponents in their last two series of the split to get themselves into the playoffs where it's well and truly. They're at six series wins right now. They need at least seven. And there's even a likelihood, well, there's a chance that there's an eight win threshold needed as well this game here sets us up for what could be another really crazy upset that's happened today who yeah, I mean, wants to go to playoffs true Waymo, they're on half of the wins of jdg jdg at 12 and 2 Waymo are 6 and 8 there is no universe this should be happening and yet Waymo have shown up at the very end of the split and they take game one against yeah Tal talia should just be like first picked probably god only knows what's gonna happen after i think it's so good for both of these players All right, 10 minutes. Play an ad here. You're back.
Okay. Probably two more games. It's feeling like a 1-1. One, one. Maybe Weibo just counters JDG. Who knows? I should also mute it when I go AFK. When I go AFK, I get copyrights striked on YouTube. YouTube just... Dude, this... The reason why people don't stream on YouTube is, bro, their copyright system is fucking crazy. <laughs> they, like, live copyright you and everything. It's actually so insane. I should just mute it. I'm probably getting copyright striked right now as we speak. Okay, we have 32 members on YouTube. Not bad. Did I watch the FPX match? I watched it on like second monitor. Bro, this is what I was telling Gillius about the LPL, man. Like, if you show up and you're like playing versus a bottom team, like one of the worst teams in LPL, like RNG, and you have a bad day, you show up and you have a bad day, you're going to get fucking rolled, by the way. It doesn't matter if like, if their record isn't good. Like, there's just no teams besides for like maybe Ultra Prime and sometimes EDG. Then I feel like you can just rock up the LPL, just play like dog shit and just get awarded the victory because you have better nameplates. That's like the reason why I always like watching LPL. That's the reason for it right there. G2 can try to lose games and so win. That's, that's what I mean. You know, like if G2 shows up and they have a bad day, a lot of times they'll just still beat teams that they should like be struggling against. They'll show up, they'll play a smolder game, they'll take like a horrible fight at second Drake or third Drake. They'll get fucking 4 0'd. Enemy team will be 6 0 kill score up 2 3 Drakes and they'll just still win the game anyway. Same thing happens in LCS. Like you'll just win games versus bad teams i feel like the same thing low-key happens in, in lck versus like drx nongshim i think lpl is the region where like these bottom teams actually are fucking vicious bro on mute soon
welcome back to the LPL and it is a bit topsy-turvy today yep. that is for sure RNG upsetting in our first series of the day then TT almost winning two games against top esports and now in the third series Weibo start off with a win against JDG this has not okay. been anything close to the day I was expecting so far now, well Weibo beat JDG Weibo. come on let's see bro for the inconsistent and pull out some weird stuff it's like that um that one quote from Pirates of the Caribbean is that you should never know it's the, it's the honest people you need to be worried about because you never know when they're going to do something stupid when you do something with the inconsistent teams like there's just every chance that they will come out with a massive game like this Shahu he's had a really really bad split in a lot of ways he comes out with a fantastic game Absolutely yeah it's just it's dude it's banned Holly our first picket that's what I think that's my read bro this champion is too broken for both these players it's just too broken JDG. They were stuck just in mid lane waiting for a play that never came to them. Weibo never looked like they were hugely ever worried in that game. Yeah, no, not at all. I have to say, I'm not a fan of the lethality Callista. I mean, you were discussing this a little yeah, bit in the break. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like maybe there are use cases, but I currently hate it until I see that on my screen. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Gao having some, uh, some sideways plays on the Ari as well. But Xiaohu, yes. very happy to capitalize on all of that. I think, um, I should have looked for more play. I mean, it's hard to look for plays here, though, because you don't have like things that help you set up the plays. I think that the comp was just not good. Weibo played pretty well around the conditions of everything. And we can see that basically all of the clutch plays went the way of Weibo and not JDG, which is not normally what I would say of JDG, particularly Yagao as well. I would call him, you know, as a baseline player, he's not the level of your knight or your scouts or your rookies, something like that, but he is clutch. He typically lands the big hits in the big moments. Consistently, that wasn't the case in this game. I think that um, charm accuracy was all over the place. And whereas Shahu on the unassisted combo um, Kind of accuracy was really really high and that was the big difference for me i really feel like this talia was in a better situation in the draft and just played better in the game as well and then obviously big just like that yep and this was uh the, the gg back. play could look for a big fight he just loved it at the big moment because you got jumps into the mind game. yeah i mean then shahu just walks forwards a really really unfortunate last fight from yeah Gao missing a lot of charms across the game as well this charm good. did feel clutch <laughs> this felt like maybe this would win the game Kanavi then got the drake but unfortunately uh Kanavi just died yeah got dived into the back of the pit yeah. the <laughs> so sad actually the wonder if there was anyone uh, that could have helped him and, uh, like instead of going for steel if they just killed jahu maybe they can just win the fight you know people were like ready for the play when it comes into the next game, I think we need to be very careful about giving over like scaling DPS like that. It's a meta that actually the percent they could win MSI again in this meta. We'll see, bro. I don't even think Shane I can see it. Bad game. The, the oh, problem is, it's just a really hard draft to play. Like the Cassante uh, against carries that can actually kill you. It's hard to play dash carries into a Talia as well. It was a awkward draft to play if it got late game and they didn't manage to accelerate the game well enough to get ahead of the game. Do you know what the conclusion for me is for yeah. JDG? Just, just ban Talia. I guarantee Talia. This draft is great. Like, don't worry about it at that point. Maybe that's the answer. I don't know. JDG pushed against the ropes, though. This is not how I thought this one would go, but I'm excited for it. Weibo. Yeah, I'm excited too. All right, let's see. Let's get into draft, bro. It's a long break, felt like. Just when they're on a two-loss streak at six and eight, just off the back of a defeat from LGD. They come in and they take game one over GD, JDG. And if they win this series today, they leapfrog not just anyone's legend, but OMG as well. They would go up to ninth, they'd push OMG down to 10th, and anyone's legend out of playoffs contention as it currently stands. This is why each of these matches, particularly from the teams on six and seven wins, wins means so much. This is not an expected win from Weibo. However, if they do run away All right, with it, Weibo's on blue side now. Like so, do we see Talia ban? Starts to change as they have good game. Aesol ban. What the fuck? Aesol ban into your gal? Does your gal play Aesol? I feel like I haven't seen him play it.
crowd picked for Panavi this time as well. Ari? Of course, this is also one of the better chances as well. It's crazy that they take the, the Nami. Do they really think that Weibo is going to take away the Nami from them? And even if Weibo did take away the Nami from them, wouldn't they be happy to just play Milio into Nami, like Nami Varus? Seems like it would be okay. Probably have the capability of playing Annie. Yeah. I would certainly hope so. Uh, the Ari, though, I do just want to quickly mention, like, Yagao did have a bad game in game number one of the series. Mm. He is a good Ari. I swear he's a good Ari. He's 30 and oh, 17 over the course of his career. I've seen it before, guys. I promise. Yeah, I yeah. know that Yagao can play this champion. I swear. Yagao is fine. Is, is good at Ari, bro. Last game. The that game was just a hard game. game. He was playing Ari and, and, and Tatalia. It's fine. Just gotta see that execution go up for someone like this. I think JDG should not ban Vi here, though. Because I know what Weibo banned Vi in the last game. I just think that, like, right side, like, Vi is good for both teams here. I, I can see a Maokai ban. I like Maokai ban. Do they just go for, like, Maokai Rel bans? So Maokai banned away as we look towards... Labord James A for the 19 months. Appreciate it. We answered with the Jax ban from Kanavi. Honestly, I too am terrified of Kanavi's Jax after what we've seen a couple of times this split. Kanavi Jax. Any of these top junglers. We were talking about it earlier on in the day. The Jax is just... Ban Rel, right? Maybe you don't care about Rel, honestly. I mean, your team can dodge out of Rel pretty easily. They send something that... JDG have shown they're very happy to play alongside that arc. Maybe you just ban Zin here, because it is Jaho. They ban Ivern, okay. I could see an Ivern angle, maybe. They just hate trees. It's something that, um, so funnily enough, it was a big conversation that EDG played last year. They played like double AD carry with Ivern and Maokai in the jungle for, um, uh, for like their big compositions. I think Kanavi should just play Vi, bro. Could also have a potential angle to um, pick Wukong. Poppy is open. Fuck Poppy. Navi Vi. I was banned in like the yep. first three bands, I think, of the previous game. It was banned four or five last uh, last draft. Um, will Zhao just play his Zin Zhao? Probably, anyway, right? Vi in. Zin Zhao Rumble here. Could go. Uh, no, Jarvan is pretty bad here. Poppy? Poppy's not bad in this draft if you have Rumble, but I just don't. I don't like Poppy that much as a champion. What is Sheer playing here? Is it an Udir pick or what is it? Still be quite careful. Sheer, in terms of the tank champions, he could play towards top side. Udir. The thing is, is an Udir pick. We have seen Rumble's beat the yeah, Udir, but at the start of the season when Rumble was blind picked, Udir was brought in because you could actually shove against the Rumble with like um the the Wingborn Storm, your your big ultimate. You can push in very easy, and then you can still be a tank later on. And also importantly in this game too, you're not a dash champion, so the poppy has less value against you. So Udo can just kind of run at you, and uh, you can also go unstoppable as well through the poppy ultimate with um, with the with one of the I think it's the Iron Mantle. You can use that in the ultimate up form as well. So I think shit, honestly, this Udo good frontline pick helps you play around the rest of the team. There's such big movement speed to follow up with the pick. It was better draft. It's one of my favorite. Um, films, that Iron Man. I, I would just rather have JDG's. I, I think JDG's draft for JDG is better. I think it's harder for. Our, we able to play their draft um than it was last game like they don't have like a very dis like an easy way to outplay in fights and jdg has tools to win fights and that's what jdg has always been good at right so i feel i feel like you and lyric would have a great conversation about that i like it you could go research that in your own time i'm actually quite i'm sad about that show i feel like i've i've uh You've upset I've me. Managed to, I've managed to rustle some jubies here on broadcast <laughs> today. That's uh, mission accomplished. All right, JDG versus Waymo. Game two coming your way here. It's kind of hard to play versus Lucian for um, left side team comp. I mean, they just have to like pray that, that they can get like a good Nautilus like R flash when he dives in and maybe they can like combo him. They catch him at the wrong time, but I, I care. I uh, believe in ruler to carry these. Beat them in that one yeah. matchup as well.
Alright, game two. Weibo. Plenty of power in their composition as well. Going for the... Remember, this was a blind rumble lock in top. It's not often that you see rumble blinded. But it's first strike for ZDZ yeah. as well. Wanting to get some value, get some gold out of that one. And I think realizing as well that, you know, you can get... You farm quite a lot of gold. Cheering going on Udyr? Yeah, he's pretty decent at it. I mean, he had one game where he played bad into Darius, but I think that he understands the champion. On the other side, you know, people know the tech. They know the CDR rune tech. Nice. First strike, diff. Or rather, she's going to have to itemize into ZDZ. And it does feel like the ZDZ, if you can get first strike on any other target at that point. Now he's just going to start Raptors, as always. Yeah. Yeah. Feels like a very high damage composition, doesn't it? From Weibo. Looks like a lethality build as well, potentially from light. Although we do occasionally see on hit using the uh, Hail of Blades just for a bit of lane pressure, but that is a rare occasion that that comes on yeah. true. The um, the logic is you go Lethal Temper if you're going on hit grand majority of the time, and then the two poke builds are, if you're playing poke versus poke and you're not actually able to auto-attack, you go Comet, but if you're going poke but you also kind of have the ability to auto-attack, you go to the Hail of Blades for early trades like this. I remember back in the day, used to, before the nerfs to time warp tonic, Go corrupting potion with the comet yes. on the lethality virus. I gained a lot of elo <laughs> using that build. It was so incredibly obnoxious. Did you play it in mid lane? Oh, that was uh, that was a hell of a time. I, I played a little bit in the I played a movement. Lot the they can walk up with that hook on cooldown and get level two off that minion. Jao is doing this at level two. Kanavi can read it though. So yeah. Kanavi is too smart or what, bro? Kanavi is just a genius or what? Holy fuck, they see him now. No dive mid, right? Nah, Kanavi is too smart. Holy fuck. Looped all the way around. Now he can contest this level 3 to level 2. There's it, there's no smite on uh on Kanavi, so it's not a smite fight. Ja he he denies the small wolves here, so Xiao doesn't hit level three. It's pretty big, jungle wise. No, it's definitely not a win for Xiao. This is a loss for Xiao, by the way. Like he he got two small wolves. That's it. Kanavi got his f like I mean sorry he got one big wolf. That's it. He lost two small wolves. He didn't get the gromp. Kanavi is playing the champion that wants to be um or like that wants to be ahead and he's ahead in experience. Where Xiao is a champion that wants to like win early um and he's behind right now. So I mean overall this is this is definitely good for Kanavi overall. Game one was a warm up, guys. It was a warm up, trust. Uh, yeah, Shao moves over to this top side. Here we have to grab the crab. Because Kanavi maybe looks for an invade here. Okay. Shao will finish that. Kanavi sees off. this, okay. Moves up towards this top lane. I don't know. His Raptors are respawning soon. To be honest, unless CDC walks straight into Kanavi. Doesn't seem likely to me. Kanavi saw the crab. I'm not sure if they actually Kanavi saw Kanavi. They didn't ping onto him. It's a little annoying for him. I think it's just really hard to invade when you've got also got gets double crab, but like doesn't really matter too much. The, you know, the Tristana, just great push in the early lane. Chris managed to get behind missing. He was alone in lane. It's a bit awkward for him now. Good bubble. Oh, Light nearly dodged that bubble. He stepped back, but stepped forward just ever so slightly too early. Did get caught, so missing. Hey, missing got the cannon. With that one, to be fair. Obvious here, though. Uh, behind them. This is dangerous. <laughs> This They're onto no ruler. This whatsoever. Ruler uses cleanse and flash. Okay, Xiao Hao uh, W'd for movement speed. Missing. Low on HP. Pulled in by Chris, but flashes out to safety. And JDG's bot lane survives. So what's happening with Nice, nice for the bot lane. But I think overall, like, the fact that JDG doesn't die here and the wave actually gets de-pushed into them, it's... It's okay. Something that you see, though, that both solo is now roaming towards Kanavi. They saw him going into the jungle, and they have the push. Did you see how many assist pings were spammed on that blue buff? I mean, Kanavi hasn't based yet. He can go back and clear his bot side. He doesn't mind staying on the map because he doesn't have anything he needs to do right now. An advantage for him in the jungle, even if it's only slight. What that will mean, we've got a level advantage right now. If we get Vi getting to a really good level point and being able to force level six plays, big moment. 
and not able to charm the Tristana out of jump. This is another one. Key part of this matchup is if ever Tristana jumps at you while you have charm, you have to cancel that jump with the charm. It will cancel that dash because if Tristana lands on you, wave is not good for her and you got right now. Percentage increase on that. So Shahu, um, winning that kind of reaction trade, I suppose. What does Kanabi have? Tunneler? Pretty decent buy. So far, so good. Bit of a CS lead. Needs to walk back bot here. Missing has no flash. Does find a bit of damage. Crisp threatening the hook as shout out. I swear. It's scary for missing to walk up like this without flash, but yeah. He denies them, bro. And that's including the 15 seconds in fountain at the start. Drake is up as uh, the charm does land this time, but unfortunately, it's after the combo. Yep. His yak out is just chunked. It's at level 6 now as well, so one of the reasons why Tristana really is an assassin in the mid lanes as well, uh, like in the solo lanes, is that um, if you then land the jump and then you hit the buster shot afterwards, both of them give like a percentage increase to the bomb damage, and if you get the full stack on it, it is such a high amount of damage, so if you very Yao needs to stop He's definitely getting himself towards the point where playing Ari? No, he doesn't need to stop playing Ari. Why would he stop playing Ari? Because people in Twitch chat see him miss like two charms and now they just think that he can't play the champ or what? Down to the bottom side. Not level six just yet, so he doesn't have that. Like he's just not close to as mentally ill as you guys. Nowhere close to as emotional. Different bot try brush this time, but He's literally a sixty percent win rate RE player all the time. He's played like a lot of like really high pressure RE games and performed. Gets charmed here out of it. He should stop playing it now. He's playing bad he's in the series. Just stop game playing game. it. No, he's not. He greeds himself by walking towards Chris instead of towards Shaohu. Now, the problem is that Shaohu could have potentially bust a shot towards the team anyway. At that point, you have to just realize Flash, Ult, you're using both. Beat it's a bit of a sad Gen G at MSI to oh, RE games. Got a CS lead in mid lane and, of course, the kill assist. But he should just quit. Weibo, once again, good early game. And JD Literally beat Chovy with Ari, but yeah, he should just quit the champion. I say JDG are not filling me with confidence towards playoffs right now. Luckily for them, they are pretty much guaranteed top four at this point. I think they actually are guaranteed top four at this point. So they won't have to play for a good old while. When it comes to playoffs. No. Have a couple of weeks. My whole point is that it doesn't matter if he's playing bad in the series. He should not drop the champion based off playing bad on it in this one series. Like, he could literally run it down for the rest of the game, and I still wouldn't say he should drop Ari. I think it's so emotional and cringe that this is how people analyze League. This is, like, the same thing as, like, the West, where it's like, everyone in the West should just stop playing Lucian. It's, like, the whole thing about Udyr, right? Everyone was like, yeah, everyone just needs to drop Udyr. This champion is 35% win rate. It's not good. Having it just an extra life in hand can be so important, regardless of how you've done in regular season. This would be a heck of a slip up against a team which sounds crazy to say, but Kanabi se seems as the weakest link of this JDG. He's literally the best player on the team. He has the most MVPs in the entire LPL, even more than Milky Way. We're just saying random shit because JDG is playing. This is every JDG series, though. People hate this team. They say the most mental shit when it comes to JDG. So I expected JDG to overtake. All in onto Shear on the top side, ZDZ. Gets his overheat, gets a lot of damage down. Shear, maybe just try and deny that next wave. Bit of damage onto ZDZ, but it won't matter. Nice pick up here. And Shaohao finally gets one of these ganks to work. Well, suddenly, Weibo ahead in all lanes. That's another... Mm, he's dead. Nice all in onto Missing and the flash from Light as well to finish the job. Huge damage out from Light. Despite getting caught by the CC, it doesn't matter. How are Weibo playing like this after this split? ZDZ, player which you've had a lot of questions about himself, gets a great kill up towards top side. It's looking really good for Weibo right now. A very good individual level in the games that he's shown in the LPL. Bot lane, light frisk. Yes, they are a bot lane which contended with... I mean, now Kanavia 6, he's got to do something. I mean, he's got to just go bot and ult bot, I think. I think here you don't even rely on trying to kill the Triss. I think you just go and you send your ult onto light. Ari pushes one wave and you just four man bot kill light. Virus at level six does an absurd amount of burst damage when you get those uh, W stacks, blight, um, the blighted quiver stacked up as well. JDG, simple mistakes across the board are plaguing their gameplay today. Weibo looking good as well, punishing. Think so that this is maybe a time where they roam bot. They have a small timer. JDG has TP here as well. Like when this wave pushes back into JDG, I feel like they need to make a player. The game's just lost. 
Tristana's doing pretty well. This is this is a good play. First time looks like a play through the room. King hope comes out from Chris, but ultimate. Oh, yo yo. Uh, Maybe it's not. What's the shot? Be suddenly alone. And Chris even gets a hook onto Yagao, trying to find. Ends up being one for one, but you end up using your Vi Ariels, which are way more important. And all you do is you kill the support, so it's like, yeah, it's a it's a win. <laughs> It's a win, I would say, for Weibo. To get the early level six and to get these early plays, can't make it work really. So, sadly for him, it's an even play on what should have been a seriously winning one. So, Weibo, walking away, good gold lead in this early. This is a playoff race stand. If Weibo wins 2-0, I mean, if Weibo wins 2-0, it's super bad for um, AL because AL are probably not going to make playoffs anymore, and it's really bad for TT. Really struggling in the one v one. It's a tough matchup to play in the laning phase. Pretty much it means that anyone's legend would need to beat top esports in order to make playoffs. So yeah, it's pretty fucking bad for other teams. It's a good buffer from Crisp. Really not what JDG wanted with what should be a guaranteed winning fight. If you're playing via R and you're pressing both your ults on someone, you are expecting to win that fight. Did you will still be second because I got head to head over top esports? Head to head doesn't matter. What matters is game score. And top esports has better game score, so it's just not true, bro. I don't know what to tell you. It is. It's a tough one right now for JDG. That's not true. And honestly. I just wonder what happened. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I'm watching a different team than who we've been watching these last couple of weeks. Charm not going to land again. Charm who just continues to win out these trades. Farm is remarkably even in that mid lane. Yeah. Considering every time we go mid, we see Yagao get chunked and forced back. Farm is still pretty much even, but this time now, Charm who will be able to increase that gap ever so slightly. Will be able to get on to get. A turret plate or two to demolish proc two as well as those three groups working away can army commits onto this play here missing's moving over but shao still here too the plate maybe they try to play off this Xiao off this chunk into the drake i mean this is a timing where um jahu doesn't have his item yet so he's pretty weak i think jdg should fight just based off items here it's just hard for them to get in position they have to contest through bot side and they know it they have ults again, but they don't really have the lane push and the vision control to have a great entrance into And Weibo also Weibo looks like they know it. Mid lane instead, allowing JDG onto the dragon because they can get themselves plates in mid. It's a bit of a free win for Xiaohu, who want the demolitionist in the mid lane. Oh, but JDG's not even starting it here. Coming up in just another second or so. There it is just now. Is it? Oh, she just leaves it there. There we go. Okay, cool. So Weibo, looks like they're just going to get something for free. They're going to go towards the dragon contest. I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, I think Xiaohu just waiting. Still should be a fine fight for JDG. Oh, Ruler got ulted out though. Damn, Zhao Hao. Well, this was like a fight where JDG should have just had a lead. Yeah, it's over, bro. It's a wrap. They get mid turret as well, and they get Drake. Now they're just up 6k. GG. Inconsistent because they are just the most confusing team in the LPL. Lose to a bottom team, win against the top team, really doesn't make a difference to them. As Chris is now potentially going to catch Ruler, gets the passive auto attack to get that cleanse for free. Got the cleanse, <laughs> worth. Ruler also punished. Mid lane turret down for free. While all this is happening, ZDZ bullying out again. This picked counter matchup from Sheer. Weibo winning across the map. Oh, I mean, we commented on shitting the himself at the moment. Does he even like Weibo still? I thought he just doesn't care about Weibo. The split we saw. Most of the time, I don't even think he watches the matches. So. The UT as well, which it didn't look that bad at the game, to be fair. It never got seen again. And again, just pop the ultimate. So powerful in these kind of neutral objective fights. But then, just an easy Yeah, I mean, if you lose this fight as JDG, you can't win. Because this is like the timing where you actually have like a, an item advantage. Which means that you don't have an AD carry, which means you lose the DPS race. Now, Shahu almost saved Yago. That was less good. But don't worry, ZDZ's here. Savior from the top lane gets himself a kill with that uh, kind of the fadeaway red carpet. Yeah, hell of a shot there from ZDZ, and importantly, he doesn't get that kill without the first strike. Fantastic no. stuff coming out. Barely watches ZDZ. LPL, yeah. He'll be very happy with that. He, he just likes LCK a lot more. It's going to be a problem. It's fine, bro. Each their own. Especially if we have fights in the jungle, because 
you've also got the lethality Varus, who loves the jungle fight. If anyone is in channels at any point yeah. in this game, Varusol, Nautilus, Depth Charge, Equalizer down, plus a Poppy to stop you escaping. Man, I don't like that. Oh, Shao Hu, okay. Yaga, once again, that's his all four style. I mean, it's, it's good It's good for you, Gal, here. Like, you'll take this. The other guy used Flash for your ult, and you have Malignant. I mean, you're just down two levels now, though. It's kind of doomed. He gets a buster shot there before the Flash comes in. Well, before Yaga gets the dash away. Real chance of a big chunk of damage. I don't think it kills even then, but still just flexing the muscles. Weibo pushing in a bot side, pushing in a top side. They're getting themselves good presence around this Herald as well, which will be taken for free. JDG, what's their answer, right? They get to push in a wave in bot side, which will be a wave cleared by Xiaohu. They push in a wave into mid lane, which is going to be collected by Lao. There is no good cross map coming in from JDG. They're getting a picture in picture here, too. Xiaohu, yeah, actually, with another auto attack and a buster shot, probably does kill. Teleport in. Here's the answer from JDG. But Crisp is here. They get nothing out of it. Crisp arrives, saves the play for Weibo. Nice little bubble here, Kanavi. Can't really follow up because it's Poppy, so Vi is somewhat answered just by the steadfast presence alone. And it feels like Weibo not only winning these cross map plays, but Bro, is it gonna be just a Weibo 2 0 JDG RNG 2 0 FPX type of day? That is an absurd lead at 16 minutes. Dude, this is actually so crazy because like Weibo looked like they were completely fucked. Like maybe they were gonna be able to beat IG, but I don't know, like. JDG, it looked like it would be impossible. Oh my god, it's so lost, bro. Oh my god, he still gets one. It's so lost. No flash on Xiaohu here. Okay. No flash, no flash. Some shutdowns, but it still looks like it should be doomed. Those are some shutdowns, though. Oh, but it was so fun. And it does end up losing the load of gold. So that's kind of awkward for them. But still, ZDZ on the top. Oh, my God. Light. This is happening. Let's Cannon. have a chat about this top laner. He came a, came into this team alongside Xiaohao from Anyone's Legend, a team that in 2023 was not a top team. They struggled a lot. And we thought that Xiaohao would be the player that would revolutionize the team. Don't be wrong. You know, CDZ has had some really troubling games this split too. But in some of these moments, and in this game, he has really shown up. And with moments of turnarounds like this, taking an extra kill onto Ruler against the run of play, it just makes it so harder for JDG to mount a comeback. Kanavi getting that shutdown gold. It's nice. This is a pretty JDG style comp, too. You want that to go into the pocket of Ruler, but like you say, the turnaround for ZDZ, so crucial. Great equalizer, great all in with the overheat as well, and finds the kill. The Leandri's been. That's two kills now. The the last second tick yeah. from the Leandris has Idiot viewer off. Andy, he once, literally plays Apex and Pokemon on stream to little viewers by choice. Wait, I mean, I Wait doesn't like Kajal average like 10k like viewers when he does that? <laughs> well. What are people saying? Why are people trying to say that Kajal has little viewers when he does variety? He has good viewership. He's like the best variety viewership out of any league streamer besides for if Tyler won where he's to play variety. One of the niche applications which I can see winning this team fight for Weibo. It's it's worth pointing out as well that Cloud Soul did get buffed. You have the passive movement speed as well. Like yep. it's not just in combat movement speed. So no, like five six k. All right, let's see. Let's see, bro. Really, really valuable. I think it's something that's Adriel, kind let's of see. underrated in the game right now. To be honest, as Xiaohao <laughs> grabs the herald. Oh, caught on the corner. He wanted to go to the bottom lane, but alas. Uh, it doesn't matter. We've still oh, got just on here. The average is 9.4k nice. on Apex. Let's see line. Pokemon. What I said, like 10k. Actually, hold on. His biggest skill has been um, just brute laning phase, brute forcing laning phase, getting advantages. He's been fantastic on the Cassante, even in difficult. 9.4k on Apex. He's not managed to get that much out of him. And himself. he's definitely got the better out of him, despite the counter pick. And now, as we get later into the game, you have Clay and Udi that will just run at the Dristana and the Varus, and they have Pokemon so is 9.5. Yeah, I mean, it's literally exactly what I said. A big issue. We're just lying for free. I feel like there are a lot of issues for JDG, and uh, I don't have any answers right now on how to fix them because, I mean, they seem to have just come out of the blue, like. Because yeah, Weibo are playing very well today, but it does feel like JDG are off as well. It feels like it's 
something's gone on. Yeah, Either way, way both. They can start the pattern. Kanavi is not even in mid lane just yet. Seven Crazy to know that even if you average like as many viewers as Kajal does, you'll still get viewer Andy though. Good to know that everyone is just mentally ill. Free Baron though for Weibo. Oh my god, they can't play, they can't play. GG bro, GG. They got stomped. Yeah, and I think we have you show up and you don't perform even into bad teams like RNG like Weibo has not been great this season you get stomped Miguel is trying to force anything help his team yeah I'm just trying to find something trying to find anything at this point but uh, unfortunately I don't think they're gonna find it <laughs> look at that win percentage that projection how rarely do we see that lying has been OP for so long. dude lying on the on the internet is actually so OP there's like zero counterplay to it dude just there's actually zero counterplay i gotta start lying on the internet more this is brutal because like the thing is like like if you just lie on the internet and then people correct you but you just ignore that they've corrected you and you continue to lie it's like giga giga op i don't think there's any chance of them going further but right now in this game in this series it's like the next evolution of my haterism because right now i just like hate for free like i schedule hate like for example i i had like a super tweet that I scheduled last night. I was tweeting something else and I'm like, you know what? This tweet will do better in the morning. So I scheduled some hate. So while I was sleeping, some hate popped out on Twitter. You know, like, oh my God, wait, hold on. They're getting abs, this game's over, bro. This end top. Holy fuck, they got stomped, bro. They got stomped. But, um, yeah, I, I schedule some hate. I got to start just lying for free because the same way that I hate and then I just don't read the comments and I just go do other shit, I can just do that with lying too. This rumble has cooked JDG. It has not looked close. Yeah, this wasn't close, bro. I mean, game one was, was close to be fair. The game one was really close. And I think game one was just comp diff, but this game, they just got stomped. This was just a fisting. Do they end? They get it, right? Yeah, they got it. Okay. 22 minute game, bro. 22 minutes. All right. This is actually kind of good for me because then I get uh, more time until LEC. So I'll be on in um, three and a half hours or sorry, three hours and 15 minutes for LEC. And yeah, we'll be doing that. I will not be doing LEC on YouTube. It just doesn't make sense to stream it on YouTube because um, like with the way my live view site works, just better to do Twitch only. Then I'll be back for the, um, like for YouTube Andes, I'll be back for LCS. Um, and I'll be obviously co-streaming LCS on Twitch and YouTube for that. So we'll be, uh, we'll be doing that later. All right. I'll see you guys in three hours, 15 minutes. Peace.